Hello there. This is the anti-Thanksgiving chat with some anti-fascists. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, so far, who we've got here, uh, Gwen No Fear had to bow out, but we have Bronx Blogger and some random geek who is now on my channel for, what, the third, fourth time? Fourth time, yes. <laughs> fourth time. <laughs> I'm a regular now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I've actually had you on more than some of the people I've known longer. Like, uh, I think I've had Tim on like twice. Mm-hmm. I think I- I've been in more chats with Kevin Logan, but Kevin Logan's only been on my channel like three times. Mm-hmm. Ah. Micro uh, has only been yeah, on there twice, I think. Yeah, and uh, Bronx Blogger is just a constantly recurring guest because. Uh, you know, I really like seeing black and red people in these chats. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're... you know, uh, 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 it's always a pleasure to get away from, you know, I do a lot of, I show up on a lot of reactionary streams, and those can be very taxing, you know. Not oh, not yeah. because of, you know, the thing of like, oh, you want people to agree with you. It's just that those people uh, largely no, like, don't know what a... <laughs> Sorry, guys. People on their own platforms, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've been on a lot of those really, uh, you know, um, hell spawn type shows. Um, yeah, like but, Andy Worski's <laughs> whole fucking channel. Yeah, I mean, Worski, Worski six months ago is not quite what Worski is now. Yeah, he used no. to be a little more uh, moderate. Uh, yeah, you know, on uh, in accordance with the YouTube Overton window, not moderate in reality, moderate on this. Yeah. Uh, nightmare. <laughs> Elfgate, Moderate compared spectrum. to Nazis, really. Yeah, and now he's just like this really sad. Uh, like if, if you had basic bitch conservatives on one side and uh, oh. yeah, if you have uh, basic bitch conservatives on one side and you know Nazis on the other, I'm sure Andy was somewhere in the center between there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, nowadays the Overton window on YouTube is is to the point that being a basic bitch conservative is liberal, <laughs> and uh, being being a ethno nationalist is center right, and then you know now they they make a dis- supposed distinction between being an ethno nationalist and being an exterminationist, and that's just kind of like uh, you mm. know I'm someone who um, uh, uh, you know there's definitely someone who takes shits. And someone who wipes their ass, like <laughs> who, who cares? Well, it's who gone, cares it's about gone, the distinction? It's gone that far that we need to distinguish the shitters between the, at least the ones that wipe their ass. Wow. Yeah. yeah, they want points. They want points for for proposing what Hitler did, but not proposing the solutions Hitler did. That includes Richard Spencer. I can't tell you how many of these programs I've been on. Mike Enoch told me he was a Republican because I was like, well, what kind of what system of government do you support? He said a republic. I said, you cannot have a republic. Well, okay. He, here's the problem. Yes, you can, but uh, it's, not, it's not honest to have a republic that includes uh, uh, ethnic cleansing, you know? Yeah, exactly. Antifa! Hey! Hey! <laughs> The vegan anarchist. Yeah, we've got the vegan anarchist here. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Now it's a party. Now I'm not necessarily sure if Piper wants to come on. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty much getting over the feud I have with Piper, anyways. Feuds. Uh, um, it, it was a really big. Uh, yeah, there was a really big schism in our friend group that I'd okay. rather not like. Yeah, let's not go into that. I'd rather not. I, I think no, I that, played that, centrist more than I fun. would like to in that, but like mm-hmm. I really couldn't like pick a side completely okay. because I felt like it wasn't my place to make a judgment on anybody. Right. I just I, I, okay. I, I, I was chuckling. Just- a minute ago, but that's because I'm going to tweet out the, this uh, stream, and I saw the name you gave yourself, Rose. I, I had to chuckle at that crime. 
<laughs> yeah, T H O T crimes. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on Twitter, bros. <laughs> That's hilarious. And here and I, I'm just the like the multi tax ninja and cosplayer at the left, self identified as. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's so weird being an anarchist on Thanksgiving. It's so, um, loaded and uh, catastrophic to, but, to be you know, if you bring it up, you're also like, it, you're like, they treat you like you're the one who's like, you got a problem. Yeah. Well, here's the problem. It, 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 it sure, sets sir, up like, a, a cognitive dissonance because. Thanksgiving is about collectivism and, 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 and being with your family and being a coherent unit. And then it contradicts itself with being premised on the extermination. Of, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know. I was almost tempted to bring it up with my family about this whole history, but I didn't. I just like got drunk with my stepmom as she gave me just a tall glass of <laughs> something out of the refrigerator, a drink she made, which I had to ask her for a while because it was... <clears throat> There was liquid on the bottom and solid, like, head of something on the top. Turns out to be cream rum. And so it was just a tall glass of oh my. pineapple vodka and cream rum. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, my stepmom was willing to share it. Because no way was I finished it all that night. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody's finishing that on their own unless they're like fucking Lemmy from uh, Motorhead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lemmy would have downed that in like, an, you know, like three hours. But Lemmy was also a severe, like, quite severely alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he switched from uh, the from uh, hard liquor that is like colored to oh, vodka yeah. because of doc because of doctor's orders. <laughs> it, yeah, well, no, he said. So, yeah, he was told to cut down his sugar intake, so instead of Jack and Coke, he uh, switched to vodka and orange juice. <laughs> the guy switched from Jack and Coke to fucking screwdrivers. I think most people would agree he lived a lot longer than he should have, or, or like, yeah. in terms of the odds. Yeah. Well, yeah. at the same time, you know, you gotta love Lemmy's, like, attitude of, like, you know, life will take a time out of me, well, I'm taking a time out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. and there's something about that like lived fast lifestyle that I think always like appealed to me mm -hmm. which you know now I kind of look back at it and think yeah you know maybe the my appeal and like almost obsession with living with or living fast when I was younger led me to make some stupid decisions mm -hmm. and also like at the same time was probably like a sign that I needed to really get help because, yeah. you know, I was also very much like struggling with thoughts of suicide throughout high school, mm. yeah. which was the same period that I was like really like into the living fast lifestyle. Like I think, it's, uh, I think most teachers, most teachers, most teenagers are sort of, it's appealing. <laughs> Just, exactly, some teachers too. But I think to most teenagers, it, it kind of is appealing because you're so far away from the consequences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, as again, as a man cresting on 40, like I'm starting to see all the punishments that you get for all the, you know, uh, debauchery or whatever that you that you engage in as a young person. I just... I was just switching between my phone to my laptop. What I miss? Oh, uh, nothing much. I don't think. We were just uh, talking about like you know when you're younger, you kind of are are more um, self destructive in terms of drinking and stuff like that. And when you get older, you start to like realize that there's um, some kind of there's there's downside to that. Well, stuff. I mean, I I mean I was the uh, school dealer in high school, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think actually yeah. the, that I could have ended actually... pretty badly mm. it we, almost did okay. end badly over a guy who wanted to rip me off over a dime bag and say that I took 40 bucks a weed from him mm. wow yeah you, but you, you know you could more afford to screw around and do stuff, but when you're older, you can't really do that as much, if at all. 
Mm-hmm. No, yeah, your body, your body starts like sort of like knocking on the door and going, uh, "Whatever you're doing, uh, please stop." stop. Please. Yeah, I don't no. know how Lemmy didn't like do that earlier. Like it all hit him at <laughs> once. Fucking, you know, when he got to, uh, er, you know, when he got to like seventy, you know. He mm-hmm. got diagnosed, with, or not 70, he got to 69, and he was diagnosed with brain cancer, like, a few oh, days yeah. before that. Yeah. There was an article being written called, Lemmy is dying, and he died before the article was finished. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, that, that's how quickly everything came at him. Damn. I wonder I mean, if that think- article. I wonder if that article writer thinks like, did I just write in the death note for let me kill my sir? Oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be weird. Where you're like, you know, I started writing this article and now Lemmy's fucking dead already. <laughs> what if I write an article about Trump? What would happen? Oh damn it! Didn't work this time. <laughs> uh I mean, with, you know, with Trump, the thing is, is it, if that worked, you would then get uh, President Pence, Pence, which yeah, big diss. <laughs> you, you can't just keep going down the line. That's like one of the biggest problems I have with the whole like impeach Trump kind of thing. Is like, well, no, if we impeach him, we're going to get someone just as bad as him, and we're going to keep going down the line through Republicans and Democrats who all have shit policy. Yeah. You know, yeah. the Democrats will just capitulate. Nothing. Because Brock, that's what they always do. And the uh, Republicans will set policy, which is what has been happening for... It, it's been happening for decades, you know. It's pretty provable that the Democrats have no spine and the Republicans are just a fucking id on the playing field. So... Mm-hmm. Well, we have, we definitely have a, I mean, we have, uh, yeah, we have, we have uh, a problem now in America where we have the, the only political parties we have are uh, center right, far right, and then the base of the Republican Party is extreme right. Mm-hmm. And then the left is, is completely uh, divested from the political system, completely divested. Like there is no, even the progressive caucus of the Democratic Party is a fucking joke. The most yeah. progressive Democrat in office is a joke if you're talking about some kind of like constructive left uh, project. Oh, yeah. And and if oh, yeah. you know Ocasio Cortez, yes, yes, yes. But you know, let's see where she is four years from now when you know. Yeah, I think she's she's probably gonna sell out in a few months anyways. Mm-hmm. If, I mean, no, no, no. Really she won't. Not- she won't do it now. She won't do it right. now. What she'll do is she'll wait until. She went until they can trade her some some legislative victories that she can then use to run as a mainstream Democratic candidate, and then she'll do what politicians do. Yeah, I see the lack well, is you know in order to make it within the political system, you have to grease palms and you have to become part of the system. You can't, you know, you can't become a part of a system as an insurgent. You have to become a part of the system by becoming a part of the system, even if you go in there intending to be an insurgent, which is yeah. why you're never going to be able to vote this shit away. Yeah. What about libertarian municipalism? What's that? It's, a, it's what Book Chin came up with, and it's the idea is to use citizens' assemblies and confederated to so they place in nation states. Okay, but that would be a new system. The, the problem in the United States of America is that our political system is not a political system. Our system yeah. of governance is capitalism. Mm-hmm. And then there's the pretense of some kind of representative democracy, but it's really a sham. It's, it's basically, a, it's a layer of clothing on top of capitalism. The real that. government is, is basically the, the capitalist class, and then there's subjects, and that's, it's like, it's, it's quasi-feudalism borderlining on you know, we're past oligarchy. That was, you know, we, yeah. we had that, and that's out the window. We're well into, like, feudalistic kind of uh, um, feudal feudalism and monarch relationships with basically uh, a Trump, uh, you know, as a, as a de facto uh, king with no political uh, interest, understanding, or a plan to actually engage in any kind of politics. He's just a ruler. Mm-hmm. 
We believe in two parts of ancient Greece the idea of politics, which is to do with the polis, is not is, what counts politics nowadays is what is now a joke compared to what it used to be. Even Greek, it was imperfect. You had slaves and women were excluded. Yeah. But like, but like our politics is statecraft. We don't do proper politics anymore. Mm-hmm. No, no, yeah, we don't. We do not have any form. Yeah. Which is what Rose would be interested in because Bookchin wrote a lot about New England town assemblies and various other cities that are like confederated together to defeat the struggle against the nation state. Hmm. I think that's what we should need to do is start a confederation of like cities and free citizens assemblies to fight this nation state and the capitalist system. Rose. So there might be a way for a bit or something like that. Or oh, sorry, I'm muted for a second because I'm trying to figure out how to get somebody into this chat. Okay. Oh, uh, it, Geek, it, what do you think? Uh, isn't that what's like a current? It's, no, wait. I just remember I uh, non compete just like release a uh, interview that he did with uh, a, someone from the international commune and uh, uh, for Java or in that region and stuff like that. So I think uh, maybe what some of the ideas that like uh, the vegan anarchist is saying is like s- kind of similar to what like Rajava is trying to do at least, is what... function, which is where the uh, who had the same ideas in the first place. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but that speaks again to the fact that we cannot. This system is not for us. Agree. Reform, reforming the system is not for us. Uh, if the social democrats want to give it a shot, good luck. I'm not going to uh, piss on them, but uh, that's not our project. Um, if they think that there's some kind of a more compassionate version of this system, uh, I'm not an accelerationist. So if they want to yeah. make this as painless as possible for the plebs, I'll take it. But um, that's my project is not uh, uh, playing on, on their chessboard. My, my project is to knock over the chessboard and play a different game. Well, yeah, obviously, but I'm still going to crack Instead of playing the uh, real-life game of Monopoly that we have going on. <laughs> yep. that, that is, that is uh, fairly generous. I think what we're dealing with right now is oh, risk. Yeah. Actual <laughs> Monopoly, at least there are, like, rules... That keep like yes, you know. Well, Monopoly is fun for a certain period of time. This this isn't fun. No, it's yeah. not. So, it, it it stopped being fun when it started existing. Yeah, yeah we're dealing with capitalist imperialism at this point. That that's what the EU and the United States uh, uh, stand for, and connect and 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 the global capitalist order is basically it's an acquisition of territory uh, through force uh, but the force is uh, perpetuated under the, the the premises of austerity so they starve you instead of shooting you if they can get away with it and that's polite you know yeah but uh, capitalism is but which is more just like, of the problem of hierarchy mm-hmm. I do agree but I mean also, yes. you know yeah which yeah. is more main like, I, I have a feeling that those are pretty much equally inhumane to just, you know, one, you're starving somebody to death, or the other, you're shooting them, you know. Well, I mean, the starving to death is predicated on force in the first place. Yes. So, yeah, no, both of them like are predicated the fact, on force. The fact that, of course, as probably you know, the fact that, like, people go hungry is because all of the resources to produce food and all of the food itself is privatized and you can only yeah. buy it. You can only attain it through a transaction on the market and you can't participate in the market if you don't have money. Oh yeah. And yeah. then, you know, what isn't bought as far as food production goes, because we produce more than it's enough food for everybody to eat. Wasted, yeah. And yeah, you know, we throw a lot of it away. In fact, I don't even really pay attention to expiration dates anymore. Like, if I have food, I just, you know, open it up and smell it. And if it smells good and, like, tastes okay, I'm just going to assume it's all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, also those expiration dates are just, like, it's a, like, best buy date. They're not at all. Yeah, they're not, it's not, no, no, every state has their own different laws about that. And so, like, it's all confusing. And even then, you know. 
even then the best ones are still based off of like best guesses of like when's best to eat it. So, you know, yeah. technically if it's a little past the expiration date, it might be less than like it's prime, but you know, you, that doesn't mean you have to waste it. You can still eat it, which yeah, I think yeah, if you're a person, yeah. that's like is something that you probably already know, mm-hmm. but you know, if you're someone who can afford food just fine, you know, you can still, like, be less wasteful if you just think, you know, maybe if it's a bit past its expiration date, but it doesn't, like, smell bad or, like, taste bad, you know, we can eat it. Yeah. Just cook up that night if you, like, uh, got the olive oil or whatever and the seasonings and stuff like that. Besides, there's always seasonings that makes things taste better. It, it's going to be fun. Well, I mean, <laughs> even then, it's not about the taste as much right. as, like when i say the taste i mean like making sure that it doesn't taste like it's rotting or anything mm-hmm. like that yeah exactly well I, my understanding is that the predominance of the food waste in, in in our country in north america is caused by fast food restaurants constantly throwing away uh oh, yeah. edible food well, and like, um not, for sake of not, yeah it's not just fast food restaurants it's like yes. any even cha- like even supermarkets basically yeah. Anything that you don't sell gets thrown away because right. if you give it away, then there's no profit from it. And mm-hmm. basically just, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, uh, you know, it would be a profit loss technically, even, so even if you destroy it, right, you're still not like giving it away to someone to consume for free. So the profit loss is cut down at some level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even like John Oliver on the last week tonight, he he only gave like a market solution to that problem. Where it's like we not we need to give these all these businesses tax breaks and ensure that's there so that Wait, they'll that's, be. That's really weird, though, isn't he like a liberal? Why would he argue for like corporate tax cut? Because uh, he is a liberal. That's why. Hey, but well, that's I, know, I understand. <laughs> like in that sense, I mean, like liberal in the sense of like we should regulate the corporations some more, like. Not yeah, he does go. I think through. he was talking. Uh, actually, I don't remember that episode because I had remembered him saying something about like giving subsidies to like farmers and stuff. But like, I mean, we already. It's, it, I mean, but no market's gonna like encourage like corporations to waste food because mm-hmm. that's also true. Most of the food waste comes from like fast food basically throwing a lot of it away but yeah i was mainly just giving kind of like a tip like for people trying to like either save money or maybe you know being a bit conscientious about like the fact that they can eat stuff a little past the date Mm -hmm. you know definitely as far as the food waste goes corporations are a much bigger issue and just getting everybody to eat stuff that's past its due date isn't going to be enough. Agreed. You know, or I say due date. It's fucking, you know, the sell by date that's like doesn't apply to anything. Exactly. And it seems like people are dropping out of the chat. Uh, uh, Vegan Annika said that uh, she'll be back, and uh, but I don't know why the Bronx uh, left. I'm hey, hopefully they'll be back. Technical thing. No, I guess it'd be a technical thing. He, uh, Bronx did had some technical little things uh, earlier before we were live on air. So hopefully, oh, maybe, yeah. it, maybe it's like he's like, oh, God, my phone's losing battery or stuff like that. So that's why he just dropped out. Okay, there he is. He's back. Oh, yep. <laughs> there we go. There's Bronx blogger. Sorry about that. I uh, my, my internet connection betrayed me. Oh, yes. That that happens to me, too. <laughs> so if I, yeah. if I freeze or drop, it may be because of that. Yeah, I had to switch from mobile to Wi-Fi, so hopefully this will be more stable. What What happened there was actually that your internet connection went on strike. It was tired, <laughs> <laughs> it was tired of the. It was tired of your exploitation of it. And so it yeah, you know, you know what's interesting with with um. Sorry, oh god, stupid noise in the background. Uh, you know what's interesting with all this stuff is that there are so many things everyday people can do to like, um sort of a STEM hunger, but mm-hmm. they teach us that we're not supposed to do things like um, feed other people or share our food or chip in, uh, you know, like even, even the structures itself, like you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to help people eat 
Unless it's oh, through yeah, some kind some of places... alienated thing like food stamps or something. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, and then there are some places where it's basically illegal to, like, like there, it's basically legislated that you're not allowed to feed the homeless, which is, like, really fucking yeah. absurd, in my opinion. Yeah, oh, and yeah, the, po- like, the point of that is is to keep us alienated, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen um, those, like, dumb shows on National Geographic or whatever? Where like a family is preparing for the apocalypse because they're scared shit. Oh, about- doomsday preppers. Yeah, they're scared shitless about some like viral outbreak or electricity failure or something. Um, <laughs> those people like the reason that they individually prepare is because they don't think that like if a catastrophe happens, they don't think that like communally coming together with their neighbors to you know, make sure everyone survives. They don't oh, yeah, I always thought about how, like, you know, if I was preparing for the apocalypse, I'd be getting the whole fucking neighborhood together. Well, yeah, so, like, the thing is, they don't think that's an option. They think that other people are, like, the marauding hordes that are going to come for their supplies because they're unprepared. So, like, it's kind of amazing to me how, even on that base level, like, the neo the neoliberal ideology of earn your keep and keep it for yourself is kind of it's even permeated into like you know the really weird doomsday prepper culture every person for themselves yeah oh, oh yeah Do- doomsday preppers is just another consumer identity and and it's it's yeah. kind of it's consumer identity that is fueled by the same paranoia of you need to firstly they feed you like an essentialist narrative about animals that that our philosophy itself disavows immediately that animals are sort of brutal Hobbesian creatures. And therefore, since right. we're animals, our inherent the is... Of, you know. They think the masses of people are the marauding hordes that are going to take their stuff in that situation. Right, because they're taught that animals don't help each other or cooperate or socialize. They're taught that animals are savages, which, which savagery oh, itself yeah. is a myth. Savagery yeah. itself is a myth. It doesn't exist mm-hmm. within any living being. You know, like animals who survive cooperate. Yeah, and mm-hmm. animals who yeah. don't cooperate, like especially in like social species, such as like humans and like great apes and stuff like that. Anyway. Social species don't survive when they split off from their groups or when they don't cooperate with groups. There's um the other thing about doomsday preppers is, is that. Like, it kind of, not only is it, like, based in this individualist earn-your-keep, struggle-to-survive type deal, which mirrors the neoliberal ideology, but at the same time, it comes from this uh, this fact that modern, like, the modern social situation is unstable. You know, it comes from the fact that the environment is being destroyed, there's not good enough infrastructure, the economy is in a bad state, so people are afraid of people in the first world are, are afraid of living in a third world country or something. So it's kind of, it. not only does it internalize the neoliberal ethic, but it also, it comes from the fact that capitalist society is inherently unstable. Can you all hear me? I, I have to do some chores and then I'm back. Uh, yeah, I, I can hear you. Hear you. Oh, yeah, I used to always look at that show and, like, wonder, like, you know, why aren't they getting their neighbors, like, involved? Like, why aren't they trying to get the community to, like, prepare for the worst? Well, my, like, critique, of with it that. Is that, my critique of it is that the instability comes from capitalism. It's not some existential mm-hmm. possibility that comes from the universe. I mean, if you're talking oh, about nature oh, I itself... Know. If you're talking about nature itself, nature no, can not talking about way. nature itself. I'm talking about like. I know, but I'm I'm saying like what my thing with it is. So, oh, like, yeah. like, you're not about, looking at, you're not looking you, at through a dialectical you, point of view. If you look at it from like what nature could do to humanity, there could be an asteroid that hits the Earth that wipes out all life anytime. Literally, it could happen mm-hmm. in the next three seconds. And there's no way to prepare it, it for that. It happened before. Right, exactly. Uh, you know, at any point, the Yellowstone volcano could fucking, you know, go off and destroy human you society. You know, what? most of humanity. Right, and there's, like, there's no way to prepare for that, really. Um, if, in terms of, like, the actual disasters that we can prevent, those come from the instability of 
capitalism. Capitalism. The way you prevent, the way you prevent those disasters is by abolishing capitalism. So, mm-hmm. to me, it's just like... Want- to me, it's but just like a form of like ideological enslavement to capitalism, that kind of doomsday prepper stuff. Yeah, exactly. It, especially since like it, it's a lot of for a lot of people with who are not critical of capitalism for whatever reasons of like that. It's almost like what a completely different system than the system we have now. It's an almost an existential crisis, which is why they almost can't imagine a world without it. Right. And then you know what's like, you know what's funny? Like I know that it's gonna sound like weird. But like, I think, or I think Fallout is a good demonstrate. Like at least the original like Fallout games, mm, the first one, yeah. Like the first two, yeah. I think I think those are kind of like a very like indirectly. I think that those are like a critique of like doomsday preppers, since they basically <laughs> predict that. Oh yeah, in the face of disaster communities of humans will find each other and work together and like build settlements and live off of what they can because no human can just survive on their own out in this wasteland, you know? Oh yeah. They're underestimating social deprivation. So the shit of like, well, I have a hundred years worth of food and I'm going to live in the shelter with me and my I'm gonna live in this dog, base. I'm gonna live in with this me, place. my dog, and like I'm my family. This, it, me and my family are gonna live in this like fortified house that I fucking paid, uh, however many millions of dollars for, and it's all the supplies that I've paid thousands of dollars for before the disaster. And you know, somehow I'm going to just defend all of that with my little shotgun or whatever. Yeah, but look, look at look at fucking their families that can't make it through th- the isolation of Thanksgiving together. Let alone fucking, uh, we're gonna spend the next sixty years eyeballing each other. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. yeah. You know, also, you know, they're sometimes they're like, oh, you know, it's just gonna be the fa- what the fuck are you gonna do like when it comes time? Like, yeah, do, do you expect like- your kids to like never fuck anybody? Like. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> well, if they're fundamentalists, maybe. I would hope the I would hope the sex would come secondary to this question, but oh yeah, uh, it does come secondary. But I do like wonder. Because, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Because they're always like the one family, and maybe they bring like the daughter and son's hus- husband and wife or whatever, like to come along with them, like their kids' families to come along with them, but like. It, what, what do you do when you get to the next generation eventually? Like, do they think that they're just going to be able to live isolated well, the, forever and not the thing, have... The other thing about it is that these people stockpile supplies. And the problem is, with their vision of eking out a, like, uh, a secluded existence in a post-apocalyptic future, they have, like, they're going to have no access... Like, the reason they're stockpiling in the first place is because they're going to have no access to actual social production. That, like, produces mm-hmm. things for them to use on a regular basis. So, like, eventually they're going to run out of those supplies and either die or have to, like, you know, survive in the wilderness or, or something. Yeah, you know, they'll eventually, at some point, have to actually know, like, uh, like, they'll have to know how to, like, grow shit. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't, so- you cannot have, like, a human, like, you can't have humans sitting in one place if you're not growing like food. That, it's just yeah. impossible. The, the, the survivalists who do grow their own food, though, to be fair, though. Mm-hmm. The prob- the other problem with it is that like that's not what happens in a disaster either. So like, you know, recently the gr- there was an amazing example with the recent hurricanes in the United States, where mm-hmm. basically FEMA were not helping these poor communities. You know, they're poor communities people of color they don't really give a shit the people that are getting rescued on the news are you know rich white people they leave these people out to dry so they um people essentially communally came together and supplied uh water and fixed each other's um houses and supplied boats um you know they didn't try to individually make it if they did they would have died um, no, but so they, but they're, they're supposed they to try to like, individually make it. They, they <laughs> Otherwise, they're not a real American. I'm sorry. They essentially created like a, a small kind of socialistic like 
community and economy in place of the help that FEMA wouldn't give them. I just want to interject with some, a couple of things that came from the live chat. Uh, Anarchist Mugwop is in the live chat, and he said that uh, I remember an amazing video of religious zealots is sh shilling uh, doomsday stuff during the elections, telling people to prepare for Hillary's America. Well, those, those people don't want to like actually. They're not preppers. They're, they exactly. believe that they they think that people should like repent religiously, and then they'll be saved in the afterlife. That's basically what they. But then Trump won, and they were just awkward. Uh, but the, like Rex Lesser uh, also says that I think that the pre the preppers are the savages that they pretend everyone else are. So it kind of yes. a, a pretty a bit of projection. Well, yeah, because they literally just want to live off of stuff that was already made for them. That they had millions of dollars to stockpile, mm -hmm. and they want to live off of that for like the rest of their days. In the scenario. That fucking their current situation breaks down, like breaks down, which I really think that like something that they would consider a doomsday scenario would be a day would be a day where fucking people take back where you know people take back all the resources that corporations have been taking from us for years. Yeah, yeah that, that that's the premise of reactionary politics itself is. Everyone else must be a nihilist egomaniac because I know I am, and mm -hmm. that's what I would do to you if you were vulnerable. Because you know, uh, I have yeah, no empathy, really, and I'm a monster. Well, the but thing about when that people is make that human nature point, I really think it says more about them than it does about me. It's like the thing. The thing about reactionary politics with that though is that yeah, that's an accurate categorization of like neoliberal capitalist ideology, right? But it's not really accurate in terms of when you're talking about fascism or neo-reactionaries or deeply uh, kind of reactionary people like that. They actually think that, you know, a social order, a collective order needs to be preserved, not in the way that obviously we do, but they think that there needs to be a, like a social order that's preserved through rigid hierarchies that they believe that come out of nature. Um, so it's kind of actually the opposite in a way. So the further... <laughs> I guess the further you go right, the more you get away from the individualist ideology. I mean, you know, my thing with fascists is I take, I take everything they say with a grain of salt. I've never seen a successful uh, fascist society with an actually functioning hierarchy. It's just a death machine that grinds blood and bones up. Um, well, the the, the really idea of any fascism. form of social cohesion existing under fascism is, is dubious. Wow. Even even yeah. even a ruthless hierarchy, you know, like even a ruthless hierarchy has to hold together. Like a monarchy can exist, but fascism to me is just um, trying to survive by eating rat poison. You just can't do it. Well, I mean. There's uh, I mean, there has to be some social cohesion. Like, so the, the historical fascist societies wouldn't have existed if there wasn't any social system. And the other thing is that these people really don't care about, you know, uh, the fact that their ideas would, would imply, you know, massive death. They understand that. They just stray away from that so that they can get good PR. Um, they don't really care about that. They care about, like, this idea of the social order that they have in their heads for, you know, the their their traditional society is quote unquote yeah they don't really yeah but fascism 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 doesn't even you know to me here's the thing with fascism fascism uses things that they don't mean all the time or things they don't understand like a traditional conservative society isn't fascism um it's not anarchism and it's not a leftist proposition but a traditional uh, society as, as malignant as it is is not fascism. Fascism is 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 just it's a program for uh, 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 sustaining a society via selective extermination. Mm. Well, but that's that's the idea that they're like the the uh, collective extermination is in pursuit of the goal of traditional hierarchy. So right, but it's it's a it's a canard. It'll never lead to it. It's. <laughs> You know, I mean, it depends on what kind of hierarchies you're talking about. I mean, like, you know, uh, the fascist societies, they did, I mean, they didn't do it completely, but they did, you know, exterminate um, the people that didn't feel fitted into their traditional society. They enforced, uh, you know, a rigid 
regime that, uh, you know, was extremely hierarchical, obviously. So, I don't know. Yeah, I but mean, there, were like, there were like 10 Nazis that lived well, and then everyone else was completely fucked in Nazi Germany. Even the Aryan people, they were just well, cheering yes, at the rallies the, because they'd get shot if they didn't. That's the ideological part about it, where supposedly everyone's going to be provided for, but they aren't. Um, yeah, it's horseshit. So I would, I would agree that that doesn't actually happen in reality. But, um, you know, I don't think it can really be ignored how much, like, fascism has an ideological basis. And it's not, I mean, the revolutionary stuff that's in fascism, quote unquote, the stuff about, okay, you know, the current order is destroying traditional society, so we have to revolt against it and install traditional society. That stuff is hogwash, I agree. Yeah. Because they don't, you know, they're because fascism is really based in a radical defense of the existing hierarchies. The Correct. Existing it's hierarchies. it's it's the super the duper hierarchies. Yeah, exactly. It's the, the current power hierarchy. structure times ten. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> there is no there is no revolution. This is it, fascism is inherently counter revolutionary. It's the most counter revolutionary right. politics so available. They, they even like fascists even contend that the traditional hierarchies or the hierarchies that we have um, are not good enough. Correct. As far as, right. So, but in reality, that's what they're going to be defending. So they're going to defend capitalism. They're going to defend, you know, you know the capitalist economy, private property, which they think mm-hmm. is destructive of traditional society and nationalism. So, yeah. in that sense, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, they're, they're, they're from having listen to me from having spoken to these people one on one for hours. This includes behind the scene. Mm. Seen the only thing that they really are uh, the only thing that really uh, puts the chocolate chips in the cookie for these people is that they're going to be able to get revenge on everyone they want to blame for their lives being shitty. It's gay people's fault. It's trans people's fault. It's my ex wife's fault. It's Jews' it's fault. It's the Jews. It's just you know. a program for revenge and annihilation, and the rest is just pretense. I just want to kill the entire world. Is the is the 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 the, the uh, well, sort of are you implying agreement between these people? I mean, I think it's I think that's a big part of it, but. And the rest is denial. The rest is things that, we, that people feed themselves so they don't have to acknowledge their shit things. Yes, but in, the, large, but the real, but you know, in yeah. large part. But I don't think it can be ignored that, like, a bait, like, a fat, like, modern fascist, like, point of recruitment is uh, disenfranchised, uh, you know, white, straight, cis people. So yeah. Those, so that they do people, is. Those yeah. people are attracted to fascism because. In some form, they do think. I mean, they don't really care about other people necessarily. No, but they don't. In some form, they do think that fascism will provide the stability that they are not getting from modern capitalism. I would say that they're probably more there for revenge than any. You know, uh, 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 you got to listen to the way they talk. They, they, they. You know, you put they put icing on it, but it's still a, a cake made I'm, out of I shit. Mean, yes, I'm aware, right? They want to kill everybody that's not them, like obviously. But correct. At the same, the, time, the revenge is the premise. The revenge well, is the premise. The rest degree, is my pretense. Point, my point mm. is right that there's a social basis for the ideology, right? In the sense that there are people's real concerns that get twisted and you know used for the goal of that ideology um so you know uh like for instance with trump a lot of trump attracted so many people in part and now the whole thing with the white working class was kind of bullshit yeah. um but in part i mean the phenomenon of electing right-wing governments over you know all over the world is the combination of the instability of the economic crisis yep. and the combination of the fact that uh you know all of these yeah, but remember what trump offers you trump... power threatened by people that are not like them so people... this this is and i'm not th- saying that yeah. obviously that they should have that power they shouldn't and the fact that they feel that that power is threatened is a good thing in the long run but Mm-hmm. There's something you can't ignore in the fact that, and especially tactically, if you're looking to persuade, you know, if you're looking to persuade and like, you know, knock down the recruiting basis of fascist groups, uh, there's a part of it that you can't ignore in the sense that it appeals to some real concerns. Some, not, you know, 
Are you saying persuade about- persuade fascists to deconvert, or who am I persuading? No, that's not what I'm arguing at all. What I'm arguing is that there is a social basis that fascists use to recruit from. That's yes. A, a lot of the time, disenfranchised, uh, you know, white people yes. or males or whatever. So, yes. um, you know, it's a matter of right, but it's a, it's a constructed it's a constructed disenfranchisement. It's a constructed dis- disenfranchisement. I mean, These frat boys who 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 facilitate the alt right, well, they're they're I'm born rich. About, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about privileged frat boys. I'm not talking about that. I'm I think about, like, Piper's talking about like the street Nazis. Well, yeah, and that's a weird way to say. It. I, I'm talking about actual working class people that yes. have the quote unquote wages of whiteness, where they have advantages mm. because they are white. Yeah, and the, fascism would appeal to them. Yes. If, you know, a fascist comes along and says, well, you know, the reason that you're in such a bad situation economically is because your whiteness isn't being respected. Yeah. Um, so what I'm saying is you should like the way to drain the social base from fascism, at least short term, is, uh, you know, recruit those disenfranchised uh, white workers and, you know, get it into their heads that. The reason that they're fucked over is because they're workers, not because they're white. And in fact, their whiteness actually hurts other people. I think I think the pers- the, the persuasion of those people is a lost endeavor that we've wasted a lot of time on. I think that so, I think that those people don't want to believe if they've gotten to the all right, they don't want to believe. I think already, before they actually go to the alt right. I'm not talking about people who are already persuaded. I'm not really yeah. talking about the alt right either. I mean, the alt right. Yes. The alt right is full of like college grads and stuff like that, and intellectuals. Yes. You know, fuck yeah. them. But um, you know, they don't have any worries about economic instability. What I'm saying you mean, is, do you mean rednecks? Could possibly. What I mean is, people who could, who would be a base for recruiting for fascists, people mm-hmm. who fascists would target for recruitment. Right. Yeah. Those people should be. You should go to those people and say, actually, you know. The reason yeah. that you feel disenfranchised is because of the fact that you're exploited economically and your whiteness that you're holding on to yeah. is a tool not only to keep you down, but to keep the people of color down who are also in your economic situation. I can see I'm, not, uh, yeah, I'm not against it. <laughs> I'm not against it, but I'm always very kind of weary of proselytizing to people who kind of um, it live, live in sort of cultures where they're, they're not amenable to any kind of, um, you know, uh, they got to kind of already wake up in a sense before I can really kind of put any of that stuff to them because sort of trying to... Well, uh, I'm, not talking about, I'm not talking about people who are sitting there and saying, you know, what would be great if the whole country was white? I'm not talking about that. Right. Yeah about people who have yet to be touched by that ideology right like people who haven't even been touched by like gamer gate levels of like yeah, misogyny not, I mean, even if you're talking about like anti like dumb people who go around being anti-feminists on the internet fuck those yeah. people I, you don't yeah there's no reason to approach them but yeah I'm talking i agree about actual just real talking life, i'm talking about like actual working class people who would be recruited by fascists you should recruit them first mm. so, well, that I, I, that, that's a complex endeavor because I can't right. I can't offer them the shibboleths that those alt writers and Nazis will offer them. They will they will test me on you know do you speak the language? And well, my why answer would you, why would you <laughs> speak their language? Like the goal would be to knock down that idea in the first place. I don't know why. Like to get your idea before you even get before the fascists even get their idea to it them. It wouldn't be about saying you know leftism is good for the white pe- person because it's not right, and that's a good thing. Right? It would be about actually this concept of whiteness is bullshit, and you shouldn't buy into it. Yeah, but you, you, what I'm saying is you got to remember that part of all this stuff because I've had these discussions before. Part part of part of politics is just like part of religion. Part of it has to be that the that you come to it that you discover it you know what i mean like like part of it is that like people people trust more so conclusions that they come to on their own so i try to put my ideas out there and if people find them they find them but um you know um 
Well, I don't know. I'm not. This is. I'm not giving you personally a mission. I'm not doing that. Right. I'm saying in terms of tactics for a movement, I'm not talking about what you need to do as a person right now sitting there. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. That's not the point. Yeah. What, are we, what would I miss, anyways? Uh, we just we just been free forming. I think that's pretty much. Right. Yeah, I think, I, really I, think, I, I think a helpful example. Yeah. I think a helpful example, right? So obviously, white nationalism and black nationalism are completely different. You can't compare the two. But yes, agreed. Many forms of black nationalism, I would argue, any form of nationalism, is fundamentally non-conducive to the interests of people of color in terms of their liberation right yeah so when groups like you know the, the social base of the nation of islam for example yeah uh when it got big in the 80s was yeah. um black people who were oppressed by whiteness oppressed by capitalism yeah should we not approach those black people because they have you know the potential to be recruited by the nation i don't think that's a rational conclusion Right? I think no, right. no, but you have to remember who black people are and who white people are in this country and who, who, who the fundamentals of what the fundamentals of their identity are. Hotep's gonna be hoteps. They're gonna they're gonna do that because they are who they are. We need to change conditions. That's the most important thing we have to do. We have to create we have to create class consciousness by changing well, existing conditions. How do you change existing conditions though without a social movement with ranks of people? Right, have. but th there there are people there are people that are gonna that are gonna kind of get on board. Well, how um, many people? If you're talking, if you're if you're fundamentally averse towards convincing people because you think that's a waste of time, then how many people are gonna have behind you at the end of the day to change existing conditions? I mean, I, I'm willing to talk to neutral parties, but I'm not I'm not gonna go okay. anywhere where, where you know I'm I'm right. willing to. I, mean, I don't think know. it's I don't think it's necessary to talk to. Again, I'm not arguing for convincing fascists, but. Right. You do have to engage with people who those people would recruit so that they can't be recruited. Yeah. But it, see, it's, it's difficult well, because the reason they pick those people is that those people are kind of... Sorry, go ahead, Vegan. Go ahead. Isn't that what like, Redneck Revolt kind of does? No, I think Redneck Revolt is stupid, to be honest. Um, I think their approach is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know. Please explain, Piper. Because, right. Well, number one, as a group, regardless of its mission, as a group, it's not very good. Um, you know, as a group, they, you know, one of their, you know, leading figures, Dwayne Dixon, met up with uh, right wing militia men when shooting with them and the group tried to defend him on it. They doubled down. So I don't I, I don't really see Redneck Revolt as allies in that sense. Um, in terms of their ideology i mean their approach isn't really um their approach their approach it's actually based on appealing to white people more than i think is necessary their appeal is that um you know basically their appeal is uh, you know leftism is good for white people essentially that's their appeal their yeah. appeal is well you know as a white person you know you got laid off from your job so, you know, white people, why don't you blame the corporations for not respecting your rights as a white person rather than the people of color? And I don't, I don't think you should appeal to the rights of white people. I think you need to appeal to the mm. fact that whiteness is bad in the first place and whiteness needs to be rejected. Yeah, but if you can get... Those white, then you can do a sleight of hand trick attack. I will and say though, I don't think exactly. so no matter which way you go, no matter which way you go, the left will always have its work more cut out for it mm -hmm. because you know the right has a much easier appeal. Yes, that's because it's appealing to the defense. It's of the existing order. yeah, it's very much. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I would say too that it's very much an instant gratification kind of appeal too. Sure. Here's a clear-cut enemy. Here is A plus B equals C. I'm going to yeah. give you answers immediately. You don't have to do any kind of work whatsoever. Um, uh, you know, I see what you're saying. I mean, no, look, with, if, if I'm speaking to a, if I'm speaking to a, a, a white person, 
um, they don't have any other problems other than being workers. They have economic problems. They don't have identity problems. So I, I, I would address that person's uh, problems as a worker. But if I'm talking to a, a non-white person in this country, then they have worker-based problems, but they also have uh, identity problems that need to be addressed. But white people don't have any kind of identity problems. They just have economic problems. And if we declare this is our economic program, they can bring their ass. They can bring their ass to me because I made a, a declaration of an economic program that works for them. And they can decide to leave whiteness behind if they, if, if, you know, if they value their economic situation more than that. But I'm not going to say anything to them. To uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, speak to their whiteness. That's their own problem. Yeah, well, that's that was my argument, right? My argument is that you shouldn't speak to their whiteness. You should speak to their economic disadvantage. Right. But I mean, I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to explain to these white, these, these, even white nationalists basically sort of uh, understand um, how fucked up capitalism is. They just don't propose anything other than uh, punishment and revenge and things that's like that not... for it. Most people understand how fucked up capitalism is, but the thing is, most people yeah, don't. Understand. They're not stupid. Most people don't put a face to it. Most people don't put, mm. okay, this is capitalism. Most people don't say, okay, the way out of this is socialism or revolution or something. Oh, no, but you don't even have to present it as that. All you have to do is say, we're fucking turning on the boss. And then the hierarchy, you know, it goes up from there. The most important revolution is at the ground level. All you have to do is tell them the boss I mean, is a piece of I shit. I don't know that that's. No, because. The problem with that is that, like, if you're doing a social movement, if you just if you if you just want to overturn the whole thing by spontaneous action without any, you know, coherent movement or um, ideas behind it, I mean, that's one thing, and I don't think that'll work. But if you, <laughs> I think what you need to do is you have to have uh, a movement with clear ideas, and I think, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, you, what's what's, what's your what's your position? Are you are you ANCOM? Yes. I mean, to me, theory doesn't matter very much if you don't do anything. So the most, you know, you don't have to sell communism or whatever to people. You just have to sort of, uh, you know, uh, bring, br you know, uh, focus their discontent on the right people, on the right institutions. No, you don't no, have to really give them the branding. I don't. Agree. I mean, I think you still have to teach them about like. I don't. I don't agree with that. Stuff. Here's why I don't agree with that. The reason I don't agree with that is because you're not giving people an analysis. Right. You're not giving people and it doesn't have to be an academic theory. Right. I don't think it should be. Academic theory is beyond the scope of most working class people. And it's not because they're dumb. It's because why the fuck would they want to bother with it? And I agree with them. Um, but, you know, they if you're going to actually liberate people, you have to give them the tools to understand the world themselves. Right. You can't just say these are the bad guys. Because that's not liberating anyone. You're manipulating people to go after other groups, essentially. Uh, it's mm. a, basically a vanguardist approach. So, huh. you know, uh, and as anarchists, you know, the goal is that people liberate themselves. And they can only do that if they're given certain tools. Why not, why not use communities to do so and community self I think, uh, yes, fascism. I think, I think the community should be... Should, I think this kind of analysis should be dri distributed and taught communally. Mm. I agree with that. Oh, okay. I don't think, you know, I don't think it needs to be, I actually think it shouldn't be, you know, intellectuals, you know, mm. Leninist intellectuals. That's bullshit. That's not. No, it should be working class. It should be the working class, working right. class there revolutionaries who know, who basically they know what they're going through. Like I know what another white poor person goes through. Cause I go through it every fucking day. So, you know, I can be like, Hey, you know, you know, I can say something to them in kind of over different conversations and over like different discussions and kind of give them some kind of or some amount of analysis on the world so that they can, you know, maybe think through things themselves. But, you okay, know, so, I can't just yeah. say there's the bad guy and there's a bad guy and there's another bad guy. Okay, so let me let me just give an example, uh, not necessarily as a counterpoint, because none of this is about me saying that you're wrong. That's not my point. I just want to be that clear. Oh, I don't think I, anybody's I, I just, saying I just, I just, I just generally seem to have a combative nature. 
Um, the, 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 I participated in a, in a protest not too long ago called the Fight for 15. Is everybody aware of that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I myself was at, I myself have been at quite a few uh, protests, although both of mine have, or although both of the ones that I've been to recently have been very LGBTQ focused, although I did go to a uh, union strike for uh, workers in my city. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, really? That's cool. You know, and again, I, I always pr 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 submit to people that, you know, as a commentator, right, my um, my main uh, focus, or at least in terms of, you know, I don't have post-secondary education, and my, uh, you know, my understanding of theory is a little limited because I don't have post-secondary, and I didn't have access to certain resources. So most of what my channel does is, is analyze the existing uh, movement on the other side, right? Like my understanding of, of fascism is probably a little stronger than the kind of the, the specific picadillos of anarchist theory. Um, so, you know, feel free to educate me because I'm still learning. I'm, I'm still learning, uh, you know. I am really learning. So please educate me as much as possible as well. I'm I'm still yeah. yeah. Well, I so think I have a very similar We need hard <laughs> to so, so, you know, again, not, not to be too self-deprecating, but I do have a somewhat pedestrian understanding of, of my positive positions on this stuff. But my yeah, idea of a, my idea of an effective protest was the fight for 15 and yeah. kind of, there wasn't really any ideology there other than the goal. Yeah. And if there's, there's, that's kind of generally what my activism in my personal life has generally been because a lot of it has to do with organizing through my labor union and stuff. So what's wrong with organizing a movement around the goal rather than like philosophy or ideology or something? Not that I'm against that, but I'm just saying in a utilitarian sense, in the times where I have acted as an activist in the real world, most of the messaging was like, this is our goal, this is what we want, and that's that's all we did. Well, okay, here's the thing with that, right? So yeah. there's nothing wrong with organizing for a specific demand. Obviously, people do that all the time. You need yeah. to do that at some point. Yeah. Um, Right, that was the focus of Fight for 15, was the $15 right. an hour minimum wage. Right. But the problem there is that if you're only thinking about specific demands, right, then there's no reason. Like, there's, no, there's nothing pulling you towards overthrowing the existing system and replacing it with something better if you're just thinking about specific demands. Because okay, then but, the, the, right. the struggle for the existing demands goes on forever. And right, but see, there's, there, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, been, yeah. there's been arguments to the contrary. Right. So, for instance, Trotskyists and their transitional program argue that, you know, basically those demands, basically the vanguard can push people towards those demands. And once those demands are inevitably defeated by capitalism, then magically people will realize capitalism is the problem. That's bullshit. That's just driving people into defeat. That's what that is. And it's mm, yeah. essentially you're just demoralizing people, if anything. Okay, so, so I'm speaking from my own little, uh, you know, for context, I'm speaking from my own little microcosm, and most of the people that I met on the the picket lines, so to speak, with that movement, were like me. They weren't. They didn't have college education. They were pretty. They had pretty, you know. Again, and and I probably have more complex politics than the average person I spoke to. Uh, you know, like the average person I spoke to wouldn't know who Noam Chomsky was, for example, or where to start with that kind of stuff. Well, I and mean. Before I got into like radical politics, I myself wouldn't have. It, you know, everybody has to start somewhere. Like where, where, where I organize, right? I'm thirty. I'm on the melee thirty, and the, the 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 protests that I have worked with and for and organized for have always been like fight for fifteen, and you know, I just don't know. I just don't know how I would do it the other way, like up here, where I meaning like. You know, like in San Francisco, you could do something like that. Like, how do you do that here where I live with these people? Um, well, th there's no you doing that, unfortunately. There's nothing like you can't you yourself cannot do something to make that happen alone. You would have okay. to involve other people. And I don't know. I don't know how you would do that with those people because I'm not in that situation. At some right. level, it has to take into account. The conditions that you find on the ground. I mean, I'm not. I, I don't want to make it. I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm disparaging my own people. Um, but I'm just saying, I'm like not, this, this is this is my experience. Yeah, that's not what I took from it. Right. But I don't know, like, what the conditions you're facing on the ground are. So I can't give you, obviously, a, a instruction manual or even a really 
good description. I, I just can't. Right. What I am saying is that um, there's no, like, there's no, if you're, if, if people are going to be empowered to take down the whole current order and replace it with something better, they have to, un, you know, they have to know to do that, right? Mm-hmm. No, but unless you have the tools to understand modern society and, you know, to come up with some idea of what should replace it, then you can't, like, there's no, there's no actual way to accomplish the goal then. Because okay. Do do, do yeah. you guys feel uh, do, do you get that? <laughs> and also, uh, do, the, do, do the do the other? I'm sorry. Do the other members of this chat feel like labor unions? I meant guys in a generic sense, and I know that's shitty. I didn't mean that. Let me take that out, uh, folks. Thank you. Um, do you, do you feel that labor unions are a half measure of collectivism when it comes to being an anarchist? No, no because I think that labor unions when properly organized, can and should be revolutionary. Okay. Uh, I think that corporate unions are, like, at least unions that are kind of, like, integrated into the corporate structure, though, are, like, really bad and kind of just... What's a corporate union? I mean, I Uh, use the word reformist union, um, which are, those unions are basically, they have they're not run by their members. They have a full-time bureaucracy that runs them, that's paid to do that. And their job is to compromise with the bosses and essentially limit militancy whatever way they can, not even really to yeah. get workers' uh, benefits. So you mean um, private sector unions then? Well, there's a lot of public unions that are like that. I mean, AFL-CIO is public union, correct? And it's yes. a business union, which is right. basically that. I mean, so... It has to do with I the structure so. of the union. It has think, much, yeah. It has much more to do with the structure of the union as opposed to unions themselves. Yeah, I think that I think the SPIA union for Boeing, which is the union that my dad is a part of, is like similar to that, and they also have a separate machinist union as well. So I think it works like that. What do you say about Butch's criticisms of anarcho syndicalism? I mean. That's kind of a different topic. We could get onto that, I guess, after we finish this. But yeah, I'm and Pluto would know a lot more about it than I do, since I'm like not this big, like I'm not this big theory nerd at all. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind I mean, of someone who observes myself and forms like my own opinions. I don't. I mean, think, for me, I, mean, I don't think people should have to be theory nerds. The other thing that exactly. Bronx blogger was mentioning secondary education i mean like i'm not like this is not what i'm proposing is not get people to understand the academic theory behind these things Mm. i don't care i don't i don't give a shit about that what i give a shit about is giving people the tools to do their own research and come up with their own conclusions on their own basis oh yeah i mean look academic theory if they want to they don't have to and probably many people won't Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, we, uh, I, I, I was. The, uh, thing about, I'm... the thing about revolutionary theory is it should be accessible to every person. It shouldn't be an academic theory. And I think, right. a problem, I think a problem with the existing revolutionary theory a lot of the time what is it that is, it's very much is that like owned is by that academics. About, is that it's about, you know, academic Marxists reading tomes of texts at universities and then coming up with a breakthrough. Yeah, like zero zero books. I've had I've had multiple spats with zero books who are like, you gotta, you know, this this kind. They're gatekeeping. I don't know if you guys know much about the uh, their, their internal. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> uh, even like Christiosity did like a thread on uh, zero books on Twitter. I remember if I remember correctly. Yeah, they're the absolute oh, yeah. worst. They're so like, we're gonna read Das Kapital. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck um, off with that uh, shit. Need, Throw that book in the garbage, please. I need, I need advice from my struggle, and I'm within a few miles of the border wall. And when I did show up to a, a protest meeting, I felt like the either I can't remember if it was Greenpeace or one of those other like green environmentalists felt so uh they have such a superiority feel just mm. I don't know how to describe it. 
And they don't even visit the colonias or anything like that. They just talk to the white people. They don't talk to the mm. to the people of color, or the Latinx, darkest skinned people in my area. Here, yeah. Here's the thing about Zero Books, okay? Zero Books is an as a publisher, unlike AK Press, unlike um, you know, maybe some others. Uh, maybe Haymarket Books is probably not as bad as Zero Books. Uh, Zero Books is uh, a publisher for academics and their theoretical breakthroughs. It's about Zero Books is about holding talks. Uh, like their form of organizing is okay. We're gonna ha- hold a talk where a bunch of people sit uh, facing a desk, and some academic goes on about the um, the uh, you know, the, the his new interpretation of Marx's value theory or something. That's what Zero Books And, you know, I buy books from Zero Books, but they're not... That I sounds would, very pretentious, I, I though. I would, have, I would have expected them to be completely unaccessible and not at all oriented towards actual organizing. So, I mean, that's it's not surprising that you're saying this, because I would have guessed... I can answer this. So, so vegan, you were saying you were talking about stratification within uh, protests, and I remember that that really stuck yeah, out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Or, I can't remember if it was, or, or Sierra Club. They felt re- I felt like they were really elitist towards me, and they didn't reach to, like the colonias or whatever they're called. I can't pronounce it right. The areas of where people live recognize as their own city, but they kind of function like those, but they're very, very poor. And they don't and a lot of the people who they do don't even a lot of people who don't know about it have the, like grandsons who work there, but they don't even know about it until one of my fellow activists told them about that. And then they had to come in Spanish because in and the because the organization in my area is mostly English based and they rarely do have anything if anything if anything on Spanish in Spanish to what my community can understand. Yeah. So, so it, that that's that's a pretty par for the course thing within very large protests. For example, like Occupy Wall Street had uh, ethnic ghettos and and um, you know because that's something that I remember doing. Um, oh, there so there was a lot of that. Another thing is, if I'm talking to a local activist. There's, I heard there's a huge problem with performance activism in my area. Oh, mm. yeah. So I mean, all, all that stuff, in my opinion, is just kind of the, the 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 politics of politics. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like, like, yeah, meta politics. It's like this thing of like, <laughs> there are like our ideas, and then there are the people who. Uh, do our ideas for you know perform our ideas in in different ways and for different reasons? Um, that's just human. That's just human little picadillos. Um, when I did the Occupy Wall Street thing, like you you know you call it out, right? Like you don't have to you don't have to necessarily um, address it to the person's face immediately, but like you talk about it where you can talk about it and. And you know you call it out when you can. Be, like I, I, I think it was, yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, like, these are pretty bad in my area, and um, there are a few that's good. Like I've known a few who are native or native descent. Is- oh, you mentioned that you were, or yeah, uh, mentioned. Sorry about the or about interrupting. Go but, ahead. Uh, so you were talking about uh, people who don't speak Spanish. Uh, I mean, who don't speak English. Fucking Freudian slip, apparently. Or I don't know what the fuck you would yes. call that. And but, I, uh, don't, yeah. I mean, I find that I have a similar situation uh, at work, where there's like a whole different level of like social stratification, even beyond just racism and like, well, you know, the divide between the workers and the managers. Like, even the white workers, like, I mean, even, like, the few guys in the Aryan Brotherhood, nobody likes the fucking bosses. Uh, Mm -hmm. But then, you know, then, you know, you've got a huge chunk of the fucking, like, white laborers 
like very much look down on the guys who like look down on the Spanish guys and then really look down on the ones who can't speak any English. And, oh, uh, oh, uh, work workplace conservatives, right? Like uh, oh, yeah. sort of these these middle aged uh, post uh, labor Democrat. Uh, uh, post Reagan Democrat uh, shitheads who are like and I, and super seen... into being Irish and super into being German and fucking you know uh, football games. I hate those guys, oh, yeah. the, the little lords. Oh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was that's kind of. I, I in my own backyard, I've seen literally a military troops guy because I'm just a few miles from the river. Mm-hmm. Well, something that I learned at my job is that apparently before, like, like apparently just a year or so before I had like actually been there, ICE had actually gone in and uh, raided the place. Wow. Wow. Uh, well, I was going to tell you that in my area, the local struggles are trying to stop the wall that goes to the b- butterfly oh, yeah, and because the that's wildlife like a- sanctuary. Hold on. And the other one is to stop the going to stop Potter Island, Brownsville. And mm-hmm. I haven't been able to show yeah, up because of my, like, cause I can't drive. But it's, yeah. it's an ongoing issue directly caused some of it by Trump. Oh, yeah. That, and that wall is like a fucking disaster no matter what way you cut it. I yeah. mean, it was a disaster. Like, it became yeah. so popular, like, of an idea that, like, there were enough white people who were like, yeah, seriously, we want a fucking wall. But then just think about, like, you know, nature doesn't care about your fucking borders. But no. I mean, even that, a lot of, uh, like, you know, when people started settling it, uh, you know, when fucking people from Europe started settling and colonizing the area, you know, they didn't make homes based off of the modern day borders. So, you know, you're going to have people whose like houses get cut right through by that wall. Yeah, you have a whole thing. One day, completely fucking like, what are some fish gonna be given Mexican citizenship and the others American? <laughs> like, we're gonna ask the fish for papers. That's it. Or check the fish's <laughs> ideas. IDs. Th- this wall is just like it's a complete logistical nightmare. Yeah. Like, it's like. It, I really don't you. think the wall's ever going to be built. I think it's going to remain a talking point yeah. for the right. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. So remember, in order in order for Republicans to keep winning elections, there are certain things they just can't achieve because oh, yeah. then no, there's, there's no point to voting for them. Didn't reach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you heard in Ohio they're planning on giving the death penalty to people's Vegan, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, you broke up a little. Yeah, you did. In Ohio, they're planning on giving people the death penalty for having an abortion. Oh. That's been floated, but uh, it, it, number one, uh, under the Constitution as it is, you can't pass that. Uh, no, this, this is one of this is like one of those this is like one of those protest pieces of legislation. Um, yeah, but we have Justice Kavanaugh now, so. Yeah, but even a very reactionary court is going to have a hard time. Uh, passing the death penalty for that's going to be really tough to you know they can't completely draw in crayon yes on the constitution they have to actually there there are words in the constitution you know so that they can bend and flex for certain things uh, and they won't remember this very very carefully Republican Supreme Courts soft pedal social issues and hard pedal economics so they, they they are really being put in there to defend profit and capital and stuff like that. Yeah. For something extreme and like if they that, they see something as a potential threat to that capital. Sometimes they just yes. uh, kind of so- they'll soft pedal the death penalty for abortions, but then they'll find actually it's a logistical nightmare because some of these rich guys right. really don't want that to happen because a yeah, lot of them are the money the money is not ide- ideological in the social sense. I Meaning yeah. the people that own the Supreme Court. They are not um, tiller killers, so to speak. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. they're going to look at that and go, oh, oh, that's no, that's going to make us look uncivilized. So they'll give some 
they'll give some shitty alternative about jail time or something or or yeah. some kind of uh, you know getting getting uh, some kind of uh, something some kind of a criminal record for it. They, Which won't, is still... they won't give a go ahead to extermination of women who commit abortions we're not uh, what's the, there's a country in south america that does something like that right like is it chile that does some kind of uh, incarceration for miscarriages or something we're going to have to was... Uh, I'm trying to. I know that that was uh, there, or I know there was a place where they were doing that, but I don't think it was. There's Chile. more than one. There's more than one South American country that does incarceration for suspicious miscarriages, and I think that that I think that that'll be the compromise amongst those people. Is they they float this very harsh thing about the death penalty, and then the Supreme Court volleys back and goes, "No, but you can you can put no, them in jail no. or something." Like that. Yeah, you're. I think a recriminalization or a recriminalization is definitely possible, but I don't yes. think I don't think a death penalty will ever happen just because logistically it's an unenforceable yeah. nightmare for the government. Yeah, and it's too idi- it's too it's ideologically right. pure in that in in a in a sense like like the, the United States government are greedy uh, aristocratic pigs, but they know that they that they can't do something like that or it'll upset. You know, capitalism is very much so premised on stability, and yeah. the kind of instability that that would create would disrupt capitalism. So they'll go, "Oh no, well that's too much at the moment. That's too much." Now, yeah. if a proper reactionary like a fascist comes in and the constitution goes out the window, then yes, I could see that happening. But well, like with with basic the basic premise of liberal institutions still intact, like theoretically we're respecting the the optics that we're respecting the constitution. I don't think they'd be able to actually get that beyond. You know, a protest uh, piece of legislation. I don't think you're right about the Constitution. What do you mean? I don't think they actually give a damn. They just use it for their own political points. No, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying you're wrong about that. I'm just saying that there are limits to how much you can just disregard the Constitution completely. You can't just go tomorrow. We're giving the death penalty for people that spill coffee no, on cops. Lot. Other shit happening first. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I just like, don't think we we're have, there yet. We have to yeah. already be in like an even worse situation than we have now in order for that to like actually be a reality. Yeah, yeah. True. There are just too many but, people but, that would react with hello? with with. Uh, yeah, I, I think it would cause too much upheaval. There's, there's still, there's still some kind of a, a premise of liberalism in this country. They're not going to just stand back, especially you know, white bourgeoisie women are going to smack their conservative husbands in the head and go, "What the fuck did you do?" You know what I mean? What the it's fuck are you thinking? Yeah, it's not. Nice. Uh, don't a lot of like uh, people like didn't Kavanaugh? I, I'm, I'm just remembering things, and so I could be wrong. That they, they, don't those conservative people also pay for like their mistress abortions anyway? Yes. So I it's think very, they, it's very yeah, common. So they I don't work. think they would they would actually put for that a death penalty to anyone who gives abortion because of that. Yeah, because then you would have to start giving the death penalty to doctors, and yeah. I don't think that they are going to start giving the death penalty to doctors who work for these big HMOs and stuff like that. Like like like, well, yeah, like yeah. Rose yeah. said, it's it's a nightmare of it's a, it's a logistical nightmare. True. Oh yeah, you know <coughs> how bad is that going to make America look? That's going to make America mm-hmm. look like we're one of these, uh, you know, countries that America talks about invading because we need to liberate them. <laughs> yeah, these people have to do, these people still have to do, even Trump has to do business in polite society. They're not going to let something like that mm-hmm. float, uh, you know, uh, under the American flag. That's true. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> you know, it's not that it's impossible either for that to happen here in America. That could potentially happen here in America. There needs to be more not. social decay and there needs to be more balkanization where Kentucky can pass their own constitution and then you're going to get some real deep some real deep yeah. shit going on with all that kind of stuff with like, you know, exterminating people for abortions and restoring like, segregation and slavery and stuff. Oh, so another related another different note, the problem with white nationalists organizing militias and there was a, a documentary on, I think when I can't remember what was it called, but uh, is there a time, German warfare, time, nuclear, something like that? 
Astro Wolf or whatever they're called. I can't remember what they're called, but they're basically a secretive Nazi extremist group that are planning on doing extremists, like fucking bombings and assassinations and like leaderless. You mean Adam Wappen? Yes, those people, those fuckers. Yeah. Um, they've always been around in some form or another. That's just a new brand. They've always been around. It's the same people that, uh, you know, the yeah. order. Did you, did you guys study about the order? No, I don't uh, think so. Da uh, David, Jesus, I think it's David Lane is his name. Um, in the 80s, there was a guy who authored the 14 words and the 88 precepts. That's why you hear people today, um, you know, saying 1488. And he was a terrorist and he was part of a neo-Nazi gang that exterminated political targets and committed bank robberies and stuff. So th those people have always existed. They will always exist. All we can do is try to, um, uh, you know, uh, push back against the kind of circumstances that enable people like that and enable them to. Um, Isn't it those people could become more powerful, or at least emboldened by this political climate we have? Yeah, but they it, it, it got, they got emboldened by Reagan too. That's why I'm mentioning the order. That, that, that was in the oh, '80s. They always oh, pop their little their little shitty heads up to fucking. Oh, we've got the presidents on our side. Then they end up going to prison oh, anyway for the rest of their life. We'll get killed. Actually, like this is the first time that the Republican though didn't like even pay lip service to like. No, they're not with me. While secretly going like, yeah, they are with me, but I don't want people to know they're with me. Oh no, they'll baby they'll baby tap the alt right, but Adam Waffen is its own thing, way beyond anything like the alt right. And they've yeah, already been uh, they've already been arresting Adam Waffen guys. They won't let that off the hook because again, that threatens stability, and stability threatens profit. Right. There's like, no yeah, way that President yeah, Trump's gonna come out and go, uh, I wanna let Adam Waffen off the hook, guys. Yeah, Adam Waffen makes the old right. No, just let the white collar criminals off. Am I right? Right. Correct. Yeah, still big. If you're going to steal, sure, still you big. tanked the fucking economy, but we're just going to give you a slap on the wrist, million dollar fine. Oh, Vegan, don't worry. They, they they arrested three or four Adam Waffen guys a couple of months ago because they were involved in a hate crime murder of a college student. Um, in California, right? No, I don't know. I yeah, I up. saw a documentary on him, but the yeah. the, the old right, and that's scary. Oh yeah, yeah, the alt right are the alt right are politicians in a sense, or, or at least they're you know political hustlers or whatever. But the yeah. the Adam Waffen are are a proper and who you know they're all I'll, I'll never say that they're separate because it's all the same shit. Rise yeah. against an Adam Waffen, and they're all the same. They go to the same pool party, so fuck them. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, the, but, but the, 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 re the remedy for them is all the same, which is to, to basically um, make it, uh, Im make it uh, impossible for them to, uh, you know, uh, pushing back against austerity and the kind of policies that sort of uh, create these disaffected, atomized people that they recruit. Yeah. Yo, Bronx blogger, have you, re have you, are you working on a video response to Cosmic Skeptic? It's in it's in the it's in the pile. <laughs> I uh, you know what if you if y'all want I have wait wait a... what the fuck happened with cosmic with cosmic skeptic I need to fucking we we need to gab about like drama and shit otherwise this wouldn't be a YouTube channel. <laughs> well, there'd be, there'd be a video about Antifa and you can all tell where that's going. Yeah. Uh, you know I I've never actually watched this person. I think I might have I've seen like these videos there, but I immediately see skeptic and I'm like, not interested. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't even know of this person, but it's like, yeah, I'm with you, Rose. It's just like skeptic. Uh... uh you know, they got skeptic in the name, so you know, I'm gonna fuck it. I'm gonna hold on that. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say that I'm not interested in this channel. I, I mean honestly, if, if whenever YouTube recommends something I'm really hesitant to click on cuck philosophy. I'm not sure. But then eventually I did click on one. It's like, oh, no, no. The, their videos are at least well sourced. Yeah, that's one of ours, I think, right? Cuck philosophy, I think, is one of ours. Yeah. yeah not an ANCOM, but a lefty. Yeah, I've seen them around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cosmic Skeptic is a per perfectly valid target. But I, I, uh, uh, if you check out my channel, you'll find a playlist called Bronx Research. And there's several hundred videos in there. And that is where I sort of put create a pile of subjects to come back to, um, and then part of it is like, 
um, you know, oh, yeah, like when you, you do when much you, more analysis of other YouTubers than I do, where I just kind of sit and try to discuss, like I try to keep it limited or not limited, but I try to keep most of the subjects on like a real world or I say real world, but like more on broad topics, much less yeah. than on fascist YouTube and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My, my channel has specific targets. It's true. Like, Predominantly mine specific. doesn't really have specific targets. I mean, I think, like, I did a couple back in the day, but, like, you know, that's not for me. I'm not someone who's going to sit there and go through someone's channel just so I can respond to them. Like, I've made the points that I, like, I've made the points that I've made to the people that I want to make it to. Fucking bearing, like, on multiple occasions, tried to invite me to go onto his channel and then fucking bailed last minute. Yeah, he's a coward. <laughs> uh, but, Megan, your, your channel is also, is also uh, a polemic, right? Like, it's, 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 uh, it's about yeah. specific issues. It's about broad issues rather than specific mouthpieces. Well, sometimes I do about Santa Ana specific local issues, but most of yeah. the time it's mostly broad. Yeah. And yeah, I tend to yell at a camera, as, as you all know. I love your format. I am, let me say to you that I am quite ashamed of the, the how do I put this? Um, my channel, uh, the, the theory of what my channel was supposed to be and, the, and what my channel is now are different things. And it's just the byproduct of being in this space and being really mad about specific people and feeling like those people are being unchallenged. And that's why I do so much singling out is because when it comes to these people, nine times out of 10, a lot of the other people in this space have the thumb stuck up their ass and they're preoccupied with fucking bearing in 2018 or some other shitty garbage conservative when they should be focusing on the, the fucking red ice TV or how many, how many here, here's a poll. How many channels do you see responding to red ice TV? I have yet to see one except yours. I've literally you, seen yours respond to red ice TV. Have you seen their subscriber count? It's over, it's over a quarter million and no one responds to them. Wow. So again, I'm not tooting my own horn as some kind of superhero. But the reason that I fixate on these specific people rather than what I really wanted to do, which was like Bronx, because Bronx is in the name, and I wanted to focus on local stuff, but I'm also standing around and I'm seeing how much of these alt writers come to power on a cult of personality, and that's, that's what the specific targets are about, are fuck this person, fuck the mystique around them, they're not beyond criticism, and they're not beyond calling out. And that's where showing up on those right-wing streams came from, was... People going, fuck you, Bronx, you just talk shit. Okay, I will show up here, and I will speak to you to your face and rip you up to your face. Oh, yeah, you know, you're not any nicer to them in person, from what I've noticed. Like, yeah. you'll be civil, but you're not, like, nice to these people. Right? No, absolutely not. I mean, I've told like other not, people, it, it depends but, on the person, right? Like, like it depends on, like, when I go out and eat my Enoch, I do it with my teeth. You know what I mean? But, like, I've told other people, I said, you know, you don't have to do what I do. You don't have to do what I do. You, all you have to do is push back. All you have to do is disagree. Because a lot of people have been like, oh, well, you know, um, you know, it's an interview. No, no, an interview doesn't mean that you go, yep, yep, yep. That's not what an interview means. An interview means that you push back when people are wrong. Dave, yeah. Cough, cough, Dave Rubin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's what it is. I mean, I've talked to people that are less like well, shilly than, than Dave Rubin, and, and they've you know, oh, Bronx, you judge me for platforming these people. And I'm like, number one, if you plat if you didn't platform them, I wouldn't fuck with you, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're mad about the call outs, number two, um, if you just platform them with a closed fist instead of an open hand, I wouldn't have to deal with you because I'm not, I, you never see me do a video about, Ooh, CNN interviewed Richard Spencer because you know, it's a little limp wristed, but they, you know, they close their hand enough for me to go. Okay. Like for normies, the, the, the message that Richard Spencer isn't a good guy is clear enough. I'm not going to like yeah. go, go for CNN, but when yeah, like Stephen like, Molyneux like, is on, yeah, when Stephen Molyneux is on Dave Rubin and Dave Rubin is like, oh, I'm taking my pants off and Molyneux is like, wait a minute, he's like, I'm taking my pants off, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Marlon, you know, when someone goes on to be interviewed by Dave Rubin, they literally are promising to just show their whole ass. 
Yeah, and Ruben's this, this, like, and Ruben's like, this is strawberry lube, and he's like, sir, this is an interview. He's like, you're right, it's an interview, bro. Take your fist out. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, now when are we going to talk about Gavin McInnes? <laughs> Oh, fuck that guy. That's it. that's he, so he entertaining to see him to see his ball shrivel up. It, 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 did y'all watch that? Did you watch the whole video? I had to watch every I, second I of it. Not. I did oh. not. I, I, it, it would be Should way I? too much for me. Yes, and I, you need to watch Gavin McInnes's retirement from the Proud Boys. Oh. It reminds me oh, of I when uh, my mom used to make me apologize for being mean to my sister. And I would be like, I don't like you, but like, I'm totally going to say I'm sorry, but I don't mean it because I don't like you and you're a jerk. Well, yeah, you know, with Gavin McInnes, it's much more of a move to like, it, it, it's much more an expediency thing than it is like, it, it's not like he's actual, actually ideologically splitting from them. He just doesn't want to deal with the social consequences of being associated with the Proud Boys. Well, yeah, not just that, but he's yeah, making he's making a premise that he he that somehow this is going to help the legal situation of the already caught cucks. Right. Fucking uh, so, I know this is a little off topic, but uh, so you know anyone who's been looking at it on social media, I'm sure you've seen them, but I do want to show them real quick. Sure, this is your stream, so. <laughs> I guess I'm a cat now. <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I have friends that are furries. <laughs> uh, I, I just did it because it's like, it, it seems to be like the trans girl thing on YouTube and I'm loving it. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, uh, cats are the anarchist animal anyway. So it's true. Very true. And if, there's there's only a, a, a certain class of people or just people that we kind of make fun of for like not liking cats. I I like cats. I just am allergic to them. That's all. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm allergic to them, too, which is why I used to be like a super anti-cat. And then I'm like, <laughs> eh, you know, it, it, I was like, uh, you know, why am I like, I don't need to be so anti-cat. Like, yeah. Yo, My there are some people where they're he, like, he yeah, likes cat a great deal. Yo, Bronx blogger, how did you have the stomach to handle all those reaction and content? Because I can barely handle your the beginnings of your videos. Oh, I mean, it, I've mentioned before on the channel that it's it's very sort of destructive for me. Yeah. The research yeah. component of it is is very very uh, mentally destructive and 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 sort oh, yeah. of uh, spiritually uh, discouraging. Yeah, like I used to do three videos a week. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't, qu not that I will never do three videos a week again, but I, I had to slow down a little bit because the amount of. Yeah, you have to cut back so that you're not like, so that you don't put yourself on this like path of self-destruction. Like mm -hmm. uh, for a while I was making sure to get a video out like every week or every two weeks. Like, I, I know not as impressive as like that, but for me it was always like a very stressful thing to try and get a video out. But at the same time, like I really wanted to get the videos out where now I'm kind of like, Oh, now, you know, I think I can kind of get a schedule going, but you know, it's a very I, taxing. I try to randomize now. I try, I try to randomize the schedules for the sake of more so like, okay, what happened this week mm -hmm. that I should, that I should speak to. Um, where back in the day, I used to just kind of rotate certain targets, and I, that might not have to consume their content. I had to re consume because I had to say something to, to 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 the audience three times a week. So I had to consume Daily Show on a regular basis. I had to consume Red Ice Tea, and after a while, like it emotionally becomes like, oh, yeah. like I look at the, beginning, at the beginning of your videos sometimes, and I'm yeah. just like seething with like rage. Mm. Yeah, that's why I try not to go beyond four minutes. If you time it very carefully, <laughs> I try not go to go ever go beyond four minutes before I respond. But I also don't um, do the like start stop bearing type thing because at, at least later on, I, I don't want people to turn around and go, "Oh, you took this person out of context." I said, "Motherfucker, that's one solid brick of your ideas. That is a complete. There's no cutting of sentences. None of that stuff. I let your person talk for nearly five minutes." 
and then I talk back. That's it. I don't I don't chop people's stuff up that hard or any of that stuff. I just Yeah, it, like it, don't chop up different sections of a video and then go like I'm responding to this sentence, this sentence, and this sentence. No, because then that platforms too. I never want people to ever get the impression that I'm going to be like, you know, because Bering again, right? But he's just an example. Like, I don't care about, like, how mawkish or corny these people are. That's a, dif- that's a distraction. Uh, the most important thing is for me to chop the part of the video that contains them making their, pr- their point and then responding to the point and moving on with it. Because it, it's very tempting to be like, oh, you know, this is corny or cheesy or any of that stuff. But I, 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 I definitely try to spend as much time, po- and again, sometimes it's going through a three-hour video and going, oh, these four minutes are the most. They bloviate so much that yeah. literally sometimes it's two or three minutes. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> people are like, where do you get this from? A four-hour stream. This is the only three minutes that meant anything, and they were talking it- for three hours. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, like, if you look at right wing content. It's always like you you get these like very small chunks of time where they're really making like their main point. Yes. There's and three I've, minutes of substance, and then there's a bunch of like fart sniffing of like you know we're we're, we're really right about all this shit, right? Aren't we right? Fucking libs. Fucking libs suck. And I'm like, oh god. Is, isn't Please. that great that we're all having these discussions right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. They they literally t- this is this it's is a, a vegan. I'm sure I'm sure you're well aware of this. This is uh, Dave Rubinism in, in in some extent of like let's congratulate ourselves about talking about this fucking really radical fucking uh, dissident right for like we're talking about this. Oh God. <laughs> don't you don't you agree that the regressive ref is a big problem oh. with the society? Don't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know it's literally softball answers. It's not. There's never any challenge as far as Dave Rubin goes. Dave Rubin would invite. I, I feel like Dave Rubin would in. Uh, well, before he obviously died, but fucking, you know, before Manson was dead, I can mm-hmm. imagine having Charles Manson and being like, "Well, you know, the liberal media has like pinned these murders on you. What say you?" <laughs> Don't you and feel like you've been mischaracterized? Fucking did. <laughs> Don't you feel like you've been mischaracterized by the mainstream media? I mean, you killed a couple of people, but you're not that bad of a guy. Your ideas are interesting, right? <laughs> Sar- Sargon, Sargon certainly goes further with that stuff because he platformed uh, Amos Yi. Uh, oh, yeah, pla- yeah. He platformed mm. uh, Bannon. He what? platformed uh, a couple of other really, really. You know, Steve Bannon, wow. he recently uh, did an interview with, and it was very kind of like ball sucky. And I was like, mm. uh, How do we what's get funny about like the Amos D thing? After his, like, I think it was like a few weeks or a few months after he had the uh, stream with Sargon, but someone just like walked up to him and smacked him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Vegan, you mentioned something really. I'm going to answer that real quick. Vegan, you mentioned something, but I couldn't hear you. You broke up a little. Yeah, like, how would we get people like Jimmy Dore on our side? Because I think Jimmy Dore is like the person, if anyone can be convinced to be a war. I think the rest are in lost causes. Jimmy, Jimmy Dore is not on our side. Jimmy Dore is on Joe Rogan's side, and Joe Rogan is mm. on the side of traditional masculinity crap. Yeah. Uh, he, he, thinks yeah we're, like- he thinks we're creepy hippies. Um, I understand um, why his passion is appealing, but he is he, the reason that he was on Joe Rogan is because he does subscribe to this very sort of butch leftism. You know what I mean? Of like yeah, you know, the, no, nothing soft. Let me let me let me speak to that very quickly. This whole thing, you know. And again, I'm from the street, and and you know I am very forceful. But the idea that uh, you know I've cried on my channel before, mm-hmm. I think once or twice. Uh, the, the the idea that we're not going to show vulnerability or embrace any kind of femininity or empathy or any of that stuff is garbage because yeah. because it, it, the premise is that women can't be forceful. That's ignorant and garbage. Yeah, well, considering the fact that there are uh, four non-binary people in this chat. Uh, yeah. uh, Look at my leggings. Look at my leggings. <laughs> <laughs> Three of them femaligned, you know. Well, awesome. Right. We kind also, of clearly do that if bullshit. You're, if you're referring to me, I'm not non-binary. Mm. All right, I, I, okay. Three people who are non-binary. Yeah. Oh, uh, I can hear what Jesse Lee Peters said, said to. Kirk I guess, it, or I should say, four oh, people who are not men. Jesse Lee 
Peter said said that caring for the poor is quote feminine. Yeah, but see, that's what? that's that, that's that's what's all connected here because Kalinsky is part of this problem of yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, and this is this is also very connected to Vanguard. I Vanguard stopped watching Leftism. Kyle Kalinsky in fucking high school. <laughs> well, he's he softened up a little bit on his anti id polism. There was a time where he was uh, very sort of a barnacle uh, under the Sargon ship. Uh, oh yeah, I think he even he... had Sargon on his fucking channel too. Yeah, uh, but I think I think Sargon that he noticed. TJ. Yeah, he mm-hmm. noticed that it was hurting his cred as a leftist, and he was at least a little more prudent than someone like Angela Nago, who's like, oh yeah, I love that the I love that the left hates me. I love it. Um, so I mean, I will give him that. And I will give him that he's a little more digestible than some of the really like Jason own, own how do you pronounce it? Somebody help Jason, me. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, he's he's more digestible than someone like that who's like a complete sort of disgusting. I don't yeah. mean aesthetically, I just mean in terms of his rhetoric is it's sort of a disgusting. Oh, yeah. His rhetoric is absolutely like disgusting. Yeah. So so you know, Kalinsky is boorish, but he's not as like nuclear garbage as somebody, you know, like that that Maoist guy. Um yeah. But Even like, on, again, it's it's so stupid even, when red and black is red and black is a is a feminized movement and it's about power and it's about struggle and it's about the love of a mother for and, and caring of a mother figure. Red revolutions are supposed to be about the power of the mother figure. We're the fucking left. We're not we're not patriarchs, we're not paternalists, we're fucking raging, uh, heart eating, finger breaking mothers. Yeah. Yeah. Take down Jesse Lee Peterson. We're gonna eat yeah. the heart. Oh, the point God. of this mother the, the point of this movement is that the mother is the avatar of our politics. Yeah. I mean like yeah. even like even earlier that today reminds, um that, that reminds me of a song called from Nestor Magno or not Nestor Magno, but it's Anarch- Anarchy Mama Stumi Ukrainian song. You yeah. have it? No, I haven't. I listen to that shit a lot. Mm. Link, I link, link it in the chat if you get a now. chance. If, yeah, link it in the chat if there's a YouTube video of it, like a, an adaptation of it. You know, I'm Which sure somebody I, somewhere I, saying I, it. I will look for that after the chat. Yeah, uh, I just because if I go around looking for it, editing it now, there's a very yeah. high possibility that it'll just kick me out of the chat for some reason. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Looking yeah. at the page long enough. Yeah. Or you were looking at a different tab for too long, so we've kicked you out of here. Yeah, yeah. Th- th- that takes me back to a lot of the the skeptics are disaffected Occupy Wall Streeters, mm. and it is specifically a disaffection of I don't want a movement that's run by women. Fuck off. E- yeah, screw those people. E- you know, like, the, the, yeah. Even in like earlier today, uh, non compete had an interview with like uh, Sarah Lee, uh, Sarah, no, Zara Zed. Uh, and but, but later on, it's like people have mentioned Jason Unruh, and non compete doesn't know America Johnson doesn't know about Jason Unruh. Okay, I, yeah. I, but then once people mention Jason Unruh is a transphobic, it's like, oh, 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 if Jason Unruh is transphobic, then fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, the uh, guy uh, he he is oh, a yeah. meme at this point, but that doesn't mean that he can't. You know, uh, he's one of those memes like Sargon. You acknowledge it, he's a meme, but you gotta keep keep on bonking him in the head or he'll float back up. Piper's the trying about, to talk real the, quick. The thing about Unruh is that he doesn't really have a like a base that like isn't ironically subscribed to him, besides like maybe some thirteen year olds on the internet. Yeah, he's a four, he's a fourteen year old kid's idea of what communism is, as Maybe. learned through like Stalinist memes that weren't supposed to be taken seriously, and just kind of like internalizing this very sort of butch, um, you know, like those action well, movies where everything everything's a everything's a figurative penis to conquer your enemies. It's it's <laughs> essentially it's essentially a um, an aesthetic communism where like communism to these people is hammer and sickle profile pictures on the internet yeah um, so i mean that's basically all it is posers yes we're finally confronting posers mm. <laughs> yep you know what you can't talk about posers without bringing up and caps fuck off and caps uh, i'm trying to think i did i did debate an and cap one time and it was just so it was so. Uh, it was even Soul worse. Crushing. 
Yeah, it was even worse than debating fascists because at least I kind of like, um, I know what I'm dealing with with the fascists, whereas ANCAPs don't understand what their own philosophy is. They don't, yeah. they don't, you know, meaning like philosophy, fascists are cynical, right? Like they, their philosophy is death and destruction. And if you, and if you navigate them properly, they'll expose that, like, because they can't help themselves. ANCAPs don't understand their own position. They're just kind of like, th their position is like, I want like this thing that's impossible. And you're like, no, you can't. It's like debating. It's like debating a creationist where you're like, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to oppose this because it doesn't, it's, it doesn't exist. It's. I was in a hangout with humane mind once. And after that hangout, I'm never doing that again. I don't want any contact with humane mind. No, screw that guy. <laughs> I, um, I actually spent kind of actually years debating them on the internet and caps and, um, the thing about them is, um, I mean, their politics are essentially based on like, well, it's okay. It's, it's either very, you know, it's either kind of white collar guys who would benefit from austerity and dere deregulation mm -hmm. or it's, which is primarily like, you know, they talk about individual liberty and all that crap, but that's yeah. more or less just a cover for, well, we want. You know, we want the capitalist market to be as unrestrained as possible. Um, yeah, they, they want feudalism back in the purest sense. They want, uh, like... Mm, I don't, it's not really feudalism. I don't think that's correct. Uh, okay. It's it's just... I mean, it's essentially just neoliberalism taken to the extreme. It's um, free market economics where the market is the, you know, prime mover of all things... And the but the invisible hand of the market, liberty. Piper. Yeah, but it's even see that I mean it's even beyond minarchism because they kind of want, you know, uh, well, minarchism sort of uh, creates at least admits that the government has to some extent create the market, whereas an uh, ANCAPs literally no, want a spontaneously really, forming capitalism. It's not really that. I mean, anybody who subscribes to that kind of economics, kind of Austrian free market economics. None of them think that the government creates them. Yet. I mean, I think that because that's what that's true. But yeah, but their their philosophy at least understands it because they want courts to exist. They want cops to exist. So even if they don't acknowledge it in the front of their brain, at the back of their mind, they're like, wait a minute, well, we can't get rid of all of it. Right. Well, I suppose, but they think that the market is something that exists regardless. They think that basically like the crux of the problem with their whole worldview is they think that the capitalist economy is just when I give you a pen for a pencil. And so in that sense, we don't have to have the government, the government facilitate any of that because that that's just natural human behavior. Right. So, they're essentialists. They're always essentialists. Right. So basically like their point of view is Either they're very rich people who, like, maybe are small entrepreneurs and, you know, they would benefit from deregulation of the economy. And so, you know, they subscribe to that. And at the same time, they think they're very um, edgy kind of uh, dissident uh, figures in the, in the modern, in modern society that's so regulated by government, according to them. Yeah, but a lot of their a lot of their tropes are also just rebranded monarchism, divine right, mm -hmm. job creators, blah blah blah. Like it's just basically wow. that's why I said feudalism is. It reminds me of a lot of the um, yeah. Even Hans Hermann Hoppe said that monarchism would be preferable to democracy. Hoppe is like a really specific case, though. Like I've never like Rothbard is not the same thing as Hoppe. Yeah, but a lot of and especially the Dapper tonight, is really love Hoppe. Well, that's the thing, like. A lot of ANCAPs just basically are, like, their inclinations were towards reactionary politics, so most of them have gotten swallowed up by the alt-right, because ANCAPs only existed on the internet, and the alt-right mm -hmm. mostly exists on the internet, so it kind of just gobbled up it, anarcho-capitalism. There right. are some yeah. anarcho-capitalists, actually, that take a stand against that and say, no, the alt-right is against individual liberty, and it's for state control of the economy, we don't want that. Theoretically, every, everything with the alt right again is theoretical. Like, like you know, everything that they kind of talk about is like theoretical, and then when they actually bring it out into the real world, it just kind of is. It's it's just a wood chipper. 
You know what I mean? Like they're like, "Welcome to your new government." So it's a wood chipper, and they just start putting people in there. This, this is this is uh, something that that's been repeated multiple times by Chris Cantwell, and I'm like, this guy. I always tell people, you see Cantwell, he's the he's the true Puritan of the alt right because all he does on his show is scream about who he wants to put in the wood chipper. I'm like, this guy's a fascist, baby. There's no political pretense. There's no nothing. I hate the world. The world betrays me. I want to put everyone on a wood chipper. Speaking of that, I'm assuming that. Like, I'm assuming you know this, but I still find it really funny that, you know, a while ago he got fucking sprayed with mace in the face. Mm -hmm. Just. And And uh, someone actually sent me a video where they call where they called Christopher Cantwell and left a voicemail saying got milk after he got. (laughs) (laughs) Who sprayed you? I don't know. Economies. He refuses. What's funny is that all his shit talking about we just want to spread our ideas, free speech, blah, blah, blah. He refuses to debate leftists. Mm. Uh, uh, You know, there were were a couple of times where I discussed with people behind the scenes. Yeah. Didn't he also say something about, like, oh, you know, if we have to kill a few people? Like. (laughs) Yeah, but again, that's what makes him, him and Emily Yukis, a pistachio girl. Mm. Uh, if you if you did corrupt, I think I mentioned her once or twice. The white Sharia girl that I did a video on. Mm. Yeah, um, those are the Brad real. Brad. Yes, that she wants women to be enslaved and stuff. Oh, that's yeah. the true face of the alt right. When you strip away the politics, the alt right is are fascists, and fascists basically just want to instate slavery and murder and slavery and murder. What else you got? Murder and slavery. That's it. Well, yeah, and it's also always under the guise of some fictitious traditional time. Yeah, or some other bullshit about like, oh, you know, uh, we're going, we're going. Uh, one is we're going backward, and one is we're going forward, and they're both bullshit. Uh, sometimes they'll yeah. present it as progressive to do it. Sometimes they'll pro- whatever you want. Oh, you're conservative. Well, we're going back to traditional value. Oh, you're progressive. Bernie Sanders would have wanted women to be slaves too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, Bernie Sanders did have a bit of a misogyny, or quite a bit of sure, a misogyny. Sure, sure, but I mean, compared to these people, he, think, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think that he's, like, alt-right, like, obviously. Like, well, one, because he's Jewish, I would never compare him to a Nazi, but, yeah. you know. Oh, but there are Jewish alt-righters. There's Luke yeah, Ford. There's frame, game, frame Games. Yes, yeah, Frame Games. Uh, he's he's yeah. Jewish. They're Israeli uh, morons, uh, not uh, Israelis. Just... They're they're Americans who are who want to do. They're Jew hoteps of like, okay, you take your mm-hmm. ethno state and I'll take mine, and then they go, your ethno state is going to be in the dumpster behind Dairy Queen. Oh shit! <laughs> well, you know, I'm not saying that there aren't like Jewish alt writers or that like mm-hmm. that never was a thing. Just. Usually, it's not a good idea to just compare a Jewish person to a Nazi, though. Just yeah. especially like, oh no, Bernie Sanders! No, Bernie Sanders! Bernie Sanders! It's not because he's oh, a yeah, Jew; Bernie it's Sanders, because he's a yeah. leftist. Yeah, but if it's comes to somebody like Dave Rubin, I'll call him a fascist all day long. Oh, mm-hmm. fascist! Yes, Nazi. Yeah. It, it's usually where you start going and like if if you like. Oh, no, that's why I said. That's why I said alt writer. That's why I said alt writer. They are, yeah. they are Jewish all writers, but I would never use the word Nazi. Nazi is a white people thing. What I'm saying is that I specifically would never compare a Jewish person to that's, a Nazi. That's a good principle. I, I generally will use either alt writer or reactionary, one of those things. Nazi yeah. is specifically about white power uh, in the Aryan sense and stuff like that. It's a, it's a, it's a oh, fair yeah. delineation. I'd give you that. Wait, mm-hmm. Dave Rubin is a fascist? No, well, it's, it's a bit of hyperbole, right? Yeah, he's oh. a sympathizer. Mm-hmm. But meaning, you okay. know, I, I know that it gets his goat, so I'll, you know, <laughs> if, if you know, when I get his ear, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, you know, because he doesn't deserve goodwill or charity or benefit yeah. of the doubt or any of that stuff of like, you might, you know, he's, it, it, here's what I'll say. There are certain collaborators and sympathizers that I might as well call you a fucking fascist. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like if, if, if I would call you an executioner, if you were the guy who uh, uh, sharpened the blade, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I might as well call you a fucking execution. You did everything but the head chop. So, yeah. you know, uh, I guess between ourselves, it's worth making. But when you're confronting your enemy, you know, light them up, you know, go all the way. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. It's not, a, it's not worth making distinguishes for making 
dis- making uh, these distinctions for sake of sparing their feelings. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking of making these uh, distinctions for their feelings' sake, but yeah. more just being conscientious of like how yes. that could ha- like. Yes. Like it can want Jewish people on the left to compare a Jewish man to a Nazi. Yes, that's when we're speaking to each other earnestly. But as far as when I'm engaging these people, um, I don't, I don't. Uh, for example, Mike Enoch is not a neo-Nazi in the formal sense, right? He's alt right, all of them are. But I call yeah. him a skinhead. He's like, I'm not a skinhead, bro. And you know, I don't care when I'm talking to him. I don't care. I know he's not a skinhead. He knows he's not a skinhead. Who cares? Eat shit. <laughs> yeah, that that's the only that's, sense that I would say that is like fucking you know eat shit and that. He definitely but, agrees with white nationalism though. Like that's not. Oh sure, question. yeah, but the irony of him being Slavic is is uh, that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, you know, to, for him to be like hail Hitler, I'm like uh, he probably killed your grandma, bro. You need to take it easy. <laughs> I heard about so from friends like in my real life. I actually heard about uh, in the. Their comrades too that I met in real life, yeah. which is how I've gotten back into activism and stuff like that. But um, oh, right. you know, yeah, I had actually heard one of them read a thread or saw a thread on like I don't think it was Stormfront, but it was like a storm. It was a thread of white nationalists, Georgian white nationalists, and. Yeah. Uh, other white nationalists arguing over whether or not Stalin was white. Yeah. And they came to the compromise <laughs> that it didn't matter is that it didn't matter if he was white. He was corrupted by the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Georgian white nationalists were pissed at the idea that like Stalin wasn't white because they're like, hey, Stalin's Georgian. We're Georgian. <laughs> oh yeah, but they they change their they change their construct of white depending on what time of the day it is. Yeah. During, at some times of the day, white Mexicans are white. At other parts of the day, they're not. It, it, it uh, sometimes it's the skin color. Oh, you can tell by seeing. Uh, you could tell by seeing. And then other times of the day, when you're oh well, this Jewish guy looks white. Hold on a second, there, pal. Let's talk about <laughs> ethnogenetics. <laughs> You know, I think that I've had that, like, come to me a few times because, like, anyone who's seen my hair knows that it, like, is super curly and, like, yeah. that usually catches some, like, eyeballs mm-hmm. because they're like, well, you know, it's very possible you could be white, but, like, you know, but let me really get in close on that hair. <laughs> <laughs> when, when they actually before they take power they have as you know if you study the history of the SA and the other you know gang, the little street gangs and stuff uh, they included gay people they included uh, they always include tokens and shit at the beginning of the revolution and then at the end of the revolution they, they throw you in the oven with everyone else I, it, didn't it, they always have token Jewish people in his like voter yes. base his mm-hmm. biggest supporter was a Jewish journalist that he then had executed uh, when Hitler said, no, you have to liquidate your Jews, and Mussolini was like, cool, yeah. bro, no problem. And then, and then what's, listen, there is no uh, group that is uh, exempt from the death cult of fascism. Uh, yeah. Other Nazis, no, if they, other white if people, they can... non-white people, dogs, cats, uh, amoebas, everyone is vulnerable to extermination but the leader, and even the leader himself, if, if they feel like it, and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's I... just yeah. Movement decides that this leader is not working for us. Let's put him through the meat grinder. Yeah. How do we stop the eco fascist movement? Mm. That's an interesting question. What is that's that like awesome. with the golden one basically saying that like veganism <laughs> is good and like keeps you like pure with the environment? He's a he's not he's not a full blown eco fascist. The eco fascist is, is my no, understanding. Not- the eco fascist is that they're a like, militia. That's mixed with like veganism and loving trees and shit, right? Yeah, they're they're, yeah, they're, big, I mean. they're like, basically talking about like basically like, full blown like they basically like, take you know, co-opt ecology and they use idea of population reduction as a way to blame brown people for the environment. Oh, no, the, by mm-hmm. the way, I wasn't saying that uh, the golden one was an eco fascist. I was just like saying, okay, in the scenario where fucking the golden one goes full vegan and starts talking about how. 
white people must like live in harmony with their environment like is that like what ecofascism is oh yeah to the 10th degree like these guys yeah. if you watch their stuff they're they're very obsessed with um yes, yeah and with militias defending white women and trees mm. and uh murder and trees and veganism and trees like the the way that the alt right yeah. proper is obsessed with statues, oak some trees. Yeah, these dudes are totally these dudes are totally like the, they they're substitute for the statues is trees, and the idea <laughs> that they're gonna live in the woods with a white woman and the smell of pine is an aphrodisiac and all that stuff, and they're gonna raise a bunch of like kids with dirt on their feet. Um, Lumberjack Nazis, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, but it's, 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 what makes them different is that they're predominantly European. They're militia people from the states, but the, the, in Europe. <laughs> Ecofascism is basically just it's fascism has a tendency to co-opt certain issues, like that, deep ecology that many people. I mean, even people on the left kind of subscribe to. It tries to fascists try to co-op certain concerns that people have. That yeah, and it, but it's completely right. disingenuous too, right? I mean, in, in the in the sense of eco-fascism, it's fascists um, trying to co-opt like environmentalism. For instance, yes. a bunch of a bunch of um, you know, there were a few Earth Liberation Front people who were released who were released from jail and started hanging out with white nationalists. That's kind of. Mm -hmm. No, but in the end, the goal is fascism. The goal is fascism. The Earth Liberation Front is, by the way, it was like, um, they were like a, a group of environmentalists who, like, basically caused some millions of dollars in damage to... Yeah, they're the heroes. Of, to a bunch of environmentally destructive companies. They're heroes. Until they became Nazis. Or some of them did. Mm -hmm. There was like a couple of them that did that. Yeah, but this is like this is like Nazbol and shit, where Nazbol keep fucking up these ML Facebook groups because and several people come to me with like, you know, oh, yeah, th that they're that they're that, they're, that, that their ML face, Facebook group was destroyed by Nazbols coming in and saying Honestly, they're the true leftist, blah blah blah. I feel like a lot of like internet Stalinists get called Nazbols because they have reactionary politics, but to be <laughs> honest, Stalinism like has reactionary politics in the first place. Like oh no, no, but these people were proper, proper Nazbol, meaning that the the there are some of these groups that have now decided that they want to include uh, uh, Nazbols as part of a dialectical materialism or some shit. Like it, uh, we're 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 uh, it's like a, a sort of a they're they're drinking the Kool Aid. They're taking Nazbols at face value and trying to integrate them into these reactionary left uh, political. Groups. Don't forget about anarchism. Mm. The villain. The ultimate villain. Well, so fucking. Uh, a lot of internet Stalinists just get called Nazbols because they have, like, because they're, like, homophobic or transphobic or whatever. Yeah. Right. Like, the Soviet Union killed and imprisoned gays to the max. So, like, yeah. I mean, Stalinism is, like, it's inherently reactionary, not just in a. Economic. Yeah, but see, that makes them vulnerable. It's reactionary in a social way, too. I mean, well, that's yeah, what that makes, makes them vulnerable to infiltration. I always tell people you have to go all the way, meaning that you've got to go all the way left. You have mm -hmm. to have nothing in common with Nazis because if you have yep. one syllable in common with them, they will co opt you. I can share DMs of a particular internet Nazi who was celebrating that, for example, uh, Sargon's liberalist posted a meme celebrating Bolsonaro. He said, great, we'll co-opt them further. Do you understand? You cannot share one molecule of philosophy with them, or they will use yeah. that as a backdoor and go, me too, I also. <laughs> yeah, but some of them include, some of them try to co-opt anarchism. And well, yeah, does that mean... Anarchism. Well, yeah, because they basically are... Well, what they're co-opting is they're co-opting, like, the anti id ball form of anarchism. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that existed. How can that exist? Anarchism, but just for white people. There isn't, there isn't an anti id ball form of anarchism. I mean, there's, like, brochilists and manarchists, but they're not, like, 
That's what I mean. Manarchists, like that's so absurd. That's like an ANCAP. Yeah, I agree. Oh my god! See, brochures yeah. I can get it because socialism includes hierarchies. To say you're good, you want to maintain patriarchy and anarchism, the fucking you're tearing a hole in the fabric of space. Mm-hmm. Hear that, Proudhon? Manarchy, Proudhon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've always said I've always come back to also with that stuff because some sometimes uh, I remember uh, one of these Nazis kept going, "Oh, Proudhon's your prophet." Blah, blah blah. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about anybody. I don't give a fuck about Malcolm X. I don't give a shit about Drake. I don't give a shit about anybody. If they were whatever homophobes, misogynists, then you can throw them out with the bathwater because the ideas don't belong to them. They're mm. just people. They didn't yeah. invent these ideas. They were just proponents of them. And if they were garbage, problematic people, then throw them in the fucking in the toilet and flush them. Who cares? Mm-hmm. But you so know, many people, well so many people on the left, that not anarchists necessarily. They're, they're all Malcolm X. He had some. No, throw them in, flush them in the toilet. Flush them in the toilet. Flush anybody in the toilet. That, that, you know, oh, well, you know, oh, uh, because then it gets brought back on you. Oh, you know, MLK wouldn't have accepted the game. Good fuck them. Flush them on well, the toilet. I, Who cares? I will say, though, MLK actually did accept, at least to some degree, accept gay people, considering the fact that one of the other leaders of the civil rights movement, who just kind of, he, he never gets mentioned. Yeah, Bi- Byron, Byron Rustin, yes. But what yeah, I'm saying is, if someone comes to you and tells you, well, MLK wouldn't have, then tell them, then tell them that your principle is more important than that person. It te- yeah, you know, I'd tell them, well, you know, if that was the case, you know, fuck, you know, fuck him. Yeah. Worshipping you know, the worshiping these corpses is not going to get us anywhere. Yeah. People mm-hmm. who didn't, like, you can't just tell me that, oh, hey, you know, this person didn't go all the way, so you can't go all the way. Right, or you can't try to go all the way. Correct. The whole point of left anarchism is that we go all the way. I, I mean, there have been several friends that I've lost because they weren't willing to go all the way. Oh, I still have this little then then fuck off, man. I have this little liberal position. No, yeah, but, no, yeah, that's but, not the point of this. Green anarchism goes to furthers because we include speciesism and and eco and eco domination. Mm. Right. So, you, but, but, so why aren't you a green anarchist? Why aren't you a green anarchist, Bronx blogger? I was a vegan for six years. I hold, I hold those principles. Where I'm talking about someone who is willing to, like, I don't defend meat eating. I don't make it. I don't make any mm-hmm. kind of. You know, I judge people on the positions they 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 stump for, and yeah. some people stump for these things where they're like, oh, I'm not going to move on this thing. That's what I mean. I I I, I uh, was like I said I was a vegan for several years. I have some health problems that make it difficult to have mm. you know predominantly fibrous diet, but I still hold the same principles I did as a vegan about the the agency of animals. Uh, mm. You can't be uh, you cannot defend you can eat meat without defending meat, just like you can participate in capitalism without defending it. The problem yeah. is is defending it, and mm. if you're an anarchist and go oh well this is why we should eat meat, no fuck off with that. <laughs> That's true, Bronx Blogger. I'm glad you pointed it out. Yeah, just because we don't, we, I mean, do we really have, I mean, we don't have as much agency under this system as we should. But yeah. all we can do is say, okay, I'm going to make the case against it, even though I can't necessarily co-opt as much as, excuse me, opt out as much as I, as I would like. But I've yeah. seen people make cases uh, and be on the left and be like, oh, no, well, I have this liberal position. I'm like, well, you're a liberal then, man. You can't, yeah. you can't, you can't split the hair. Uh, honestly, I've uh, you know, a lot of transphobic shit from other vegans. As far as like my liberal positions go, I, as far as I know, I don't really have these liberal positions. But you yeah. know, people, if someone points it out, and like you know, sometimes I may be like, sometimes I may call bullshit on it if it's like a really bullshit hair. Like if the person saying that my position is liberal is like really splitting hairs on something I said, I'm going to be like, of wait. Of course. Yeah, because be like, you, you, wait, do, wait, you wait, do have wait. that brand of anarchists where like, you know, like not advocating um, the guillotine for everything. The liberal, like that's, you know, th- those are outliers, but they're out there. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, but let's not advocate for guillotines though. 
Uh, I, we're not supposed know. to be about executing people. <laughs> like, not in earnest. No, we're not supposed to be about yeah, executing people. Yeah, you know, the execution. Yeah, like, I, like, no. We, we want to avoid as much death as we reasonably yes. can. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. We're supposed to we're supposed to only do that kind of stuff in self. I mean, you can't guillotine somebody in self defense. But I'm just saying, like, no. it, re, 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 revolutionary violence within our with <laughs> our within our end is supposed to be like. No, no, no. I'm now, I'm now trying to imagine someone like wielding a guillotine, like in like Bloodborne and stuff like that. Guillotine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when someone tries to rock. Street. What do you mean? <laughs> Come here, come place your head here. Yeah. Just save me. And, uh, and I don't, you know, I again, I don't pull out the the whooping stick every time someone makes a meme with a guillotine. That's, you know, again, it's yeah. it's problematic. But you know, as long as I know the person is is shit talking, I try not to pull out the the cane for that. But I always, you know, when we go behind the scenes, I go just just to make sure you were memeing, right? Like I don't want to right the, yeah. you know i don't want us to be on the same thing and you really want to chop people's heads off that's not my deal yeah no. yeah honestly uh, like, usually for me it's like an exaggeration where it's like you know i don't actually want like you know i don't actually want to line congress into like in rows of 15 on a guillotine to chop 15 heads right. off at once right. yeah but you know i'm gonna joke about it because you know i do want to open you know, I want, I, you know, I want to overthrow them, you know? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Not, yeah. well, Almost. not overthrow them. That probably is a bad, like, terminology, bad way of putting it. But, you know, yeah. you want to end, like, the power that they have, you know? Yeah. yeah Basically exactly. kind of, you know, destroy the system. And, you know, they're going to have to go. And, you know, some of it may involve death to some extent, you know, that's revolutions are always bloody. There's no, yeah. But see, to me, but, to me, the thing with executions is that they are not in the heat of conflict. Oh yeah. They're not. An they're execution not. is involved staging. You're right. Uh, you have a, you pull up a conquered enemy. And once you oh, yeah. do that, you are setting I a did. precedence in your society that will never be undone, which is that we yeah. kill people even after we conquer them. Even when they're no longer a threat. Oh yeah, it's literally saying, okay, you know, we went out of our way to get this person who, yeah, you know, either gave up, surrendered, or was subdued in some way. Yeah. And now we're just publicly executing them. No, that's like, yeah. that, that's a sadistic fantasy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what I mean. Again, like for example, yeah, the Cuban Revolution like and stuff like that. that. Yeah, I feel there's gonna like be some of... shock humor. Like, there's definitely gonna be some shock humor about the guillotine, but you know, sure. It, if we're making like, you know, we're not like if we, you know, realistically, we're not gonna break out guillotines because that's like that in itself would be like a form of savagery that I don't think should ever be entertained. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's inherently counter-revolutionary, and it and it starts the same nihilistic cycle that fascists start when they take power of like performative violence, and 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 you know people are looking to you, and they'll start emulating that. You know, then anybody they disagree with, they're like, "Yo, chop his head off too." Yeah, I, I would only joke about yeah, it, like, just like joking about eating the rich. Go ahead, <laughs> honestly, I feel like I feel like the left, a lot of people. More people than we think would actually be for guillotine. People understand. Yeah, but they're not our comrades, and we don't need to. We don't need to. You know, the saddest thing in the history about our people is that when the revolution comes, uh, the certain parts of the left then turn to us and go, "Fuck off, hippie! We're gonna start. We're gonna get revenge." And mm -hmm. that's why those. That's why those forms of leftism don't last. Is because yeah, any I sort saw. of politics of revenge uh, because starts a, a cycle that you can't really end. Then, then one day it'll be your turn. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's that's like that French Revolution. One of my favorite memes about the guillotine was, "Oh, this boy can fit so many." Uh, it was uh, slap. <laughs> <food. laughs> I saw my one. Like problematic one. fantasies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, but that's a vegan. That's a good example. The French Revolution was unsustainable because of all these like reigns of terror and shit like that. You can't, you can't build, you know, you cannot uh, fertilize a tree with blood. You just yeah. can't. You know. Well, not only that, but like the French Revolution, 
that had like free municipalities and commies that are fighting against the nation state. And the assemblies yeah. were were threatened by the free assemblies of citizens, so they try to crush them and put. And those same people were put in the guillotine. The mm. same the same city, even Paris had. Despite having a million people and shit technology and can only fast as a course, managed to do a democratic confederalism, or at least their version of it. Or, yeah. Like, Bunchen did not invent the idea. He just pointed it out that that was common in ancient Greece or even throughout European and American history. I mean, Bunchen never really talked about democratic confederalism in the first place. It gets, True. It gets, I mean, it gets associated with him because Oshlan. Hey, Piper, leader. your uh, volume's a little bit low. Do you can think you there's anything you can do about it? Um, but can you hear yeah, sorry. Can you hear me now? All right. Yes, I can. Yes. I can hear you better now. So, the Democratic Convex- Confederalism wasn't Bookchin's idea. It gets associated with Bookchin because people think that um, Abdullah Oshlan, the actual theorist of Democratic Confederalism, got everything. He thought from book Jen, which, which isn't true. Isn't yeah. True. Mm-hmm. It was a misnaming error. Hmm. But yeah, like that's where his inspiration of libertarian municipalism is, and that's I think that'll be the strategy we should go use, and then. Piper can do her uh, syndicalism. I can do libertarian municipalism, and it's and then together we can strike the system down. And I'm gonna get high and throw a brick through a Starbucks window. <laughs> yeah, smashy, smashy. Is it gonna be in that order? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so many. There's so many remedies. You know, there's so many remedies to to our problem, uh, as long as we don't depart the basic uh, principles that uh, sort of. And again, it's tough for us because, you know, a lot of other groups will go, you know, oh, throughout history, mm-hmm. you know, you guys always get, uh, you know. And my answer to that is, okay, look, I'd rather get killed than um, depart the basic principles of my revolution for the sake of just maintaining power. I'd rather just, yeah. Might as well kill me, dude. Uh, uh, that, because then it's not my revolution anymore. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it, you know, whatever. Like, if Stalinists want to kill me or whatever, it's fine. Because <clears throat> there was some Nazbo you know, who was like, oh, if we get you, we'll kill you. And the Stalinists were like, whatever, man. Kill me. I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do it your way. That, I think, is a big point, which... Uh, something I've seen a lot is that... Uh, a lot of tanky Twitter will talk down to uh, anarchists who or anarchists who themselves are people of color and mm, assume yes. that there's someone who lives in the West. Like I saw one specifically with a uh, Nicaraguan anarchist arguing with, yes, he was black or no, they were black. Yes. Sorry. I just, yeah, they were black, but, uh, they, but they were claiming, or they were calling this other person a Western leftist. Saying, "Oh, sometimes we uh, leftists in the West tend to, you know, criticize these regimes for like whatever." And it's like the guy's like, "I live in Nicaragua. I am Nicaraguan." Like, yeah, that's that's another myth is that there's not a progressive left in third world countries. It's a fucking usually a Westerner saying that it's always someone like Unruhu mm-hmm. who's like, oh, I'm a fucking third worlder. I'm like, bitch, there's more progressive leftists in the third world than in the first world. You're a product of the intolerance of the first world. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> irony. Well, yeah. Unruhu's point is actually that like the revolutionary potential of the working class only exists in the third world. That's his argument. That's absurd. His argument, there is, his qu- argument is not that yeah. he himself is a third worlder. I mean, he recognizes that he's not. And that's actually yeah. the kind of crux of his politics because I'm of the opinion that he's a quote unquote third worldist because that means he doesn't have to actually do anything and he can just make a stupid YouTube videos. We, 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 live in a, we live in a post-communist era. So right now there is only one world. There is one capitalist world. Under capitalism, there are no nations. There are no peoples. There are no nothing. We are just subjects of McDonald's and Coca-Cola and Pepsi and Taco Bell, whether you live in Saudi Arabia 
or the Bronx or Philadelphia or Florida, you or watch Boston. MTV and you fucking eat Dairy Queen and you're uh, th this myth of the undeveloped third world. It, it, it's it's just again, except for a couple of tribes living in the deepest of the Amazon, uh, everyone, even in these these impoverished third world countries, is a corporate subject. Or even yeah. those tribes that killed that missionary. That yeah, tribe. exactly. That was yeah. The Sentinel East. Which, you know, I had been reading articles that never explicitly stated it, but I'm like, wait, what they're describing, this sounds like North Sentinel Island. Yes. I'm like, wait, because I'm like thinking about this. I'm like, wait, no, this could be really bad if they're talking about the North Sentinelese because there's only like 50 of them left. And, you know, this guy just you know, with his fucking, with diseases that they've never been exposed to, goes, tries to preach to them. Yes. You know, yeah, sure, he was killed, but he could have still infected them, which, yeah. you know, True. means that even with the death of this missionary, some, like, asshole who had to fucking preach the word of the Bible has just, you know basically threatened a genocide because he thought it would be because he thought it would be a good idea to preach to the uh to preach to people that he doesn't even know how to fucking communicate with correct <laughs> like yeah but the bible can bad yeah, can idea. Yes. the bible actually pro commands people to preach it though so it's mm -hmm. actually a biblical kind of thing Okay, I'm yeah, that's not that that the biblical if they understand thing. the Lord. <laughs> but you know, it's like, wait, so you're gonna go to this tribe that's the last un last completely uncontacted well, even then they're not completely uncontacted, but they're the only tribe categorized as uncontacted by the modern world. Yes. You know, they had never been exposed to these new world diseases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, World diseases, like they haven't been exposed to like any modern diseases. Yes, like these are people. Like just the idea of even going and try, like this, you know, it's a very destructive idea. Like, yeah, but see, it's 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 a byproduct of his ideas. It's not incidental. It's the hubris oh, no, that Christianity not. feeds you as a proselytizer. Of you, you're the one. You're the one who's going to bring the word of God. You're, you know what I mean? It, it's it's because of his philosophy that he sort of felt entitled to show up there because he feels. Yeah, oh, yeah he, uh, he actually, actually believes he's doing a good thing, and the Bible again commands people to spread the word by any means. Yeah. Not any means, but spread the word. Yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't even say he was innocent because, of course, Christians always sort of present their oh, no. hubris as. Innocent. I would say that the guy. I'm saying that he was innocent. I'm just saying that he was a moron the whole way. Oh, no, through. no, but I'm saying the praying him as like this John Birch type pure uh, uh, Christian missionary. And I'm like, no, he's a fucking pig. Mm -hmm. He's a pig. He should, have, he should never have gone there. He should have never assumed that he had the right. <laughs> Yeah, like there's oh, literally a three mile Wait, exclusion zone around that island. Yes. And but because he, he's a Christian, he felt entitled. <laughs> because yeah. he felt entitled to preach the word of God to some people who, again, yes. this guy was an Asian American man, so he was, so he spoke English. Yes. He spoke in a second language, but he didn't speak but he didn't speak within the same language family of the Sentinelese. Correct. Therefore, it wasn't even close. Communicated if he wanted yes. to. Yes. But again, the, it's it's so tempting to to the hubris that's taught to these proselytizers, whether they're fucking car salesmen or Christians. This idea of like you got to you need fresh soil. You need to prove to everybody that you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so destructive. Anyway, listen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've been going on. I have some. I have some. Yes, I've been having a, a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. I want to thank all the comrades. I want to thank uh, for inviting me on this program. Um, I would definitely be interested to uh, for us to make this more of a regular thing. I think that the future of this platform is streaming. 
And I would love to get together in Ancom a red and black chat like this more often. Uh, I can't do it on my own channel because my streaming is currently re restricted because a bunch of Nazis false flagged a Holocaust denial video I put on my channel. Are you but, saying um, green and black? Are you saying that I am at the forefront? Yeah, yeah. All, all the anarchists together, except ANCAPs, I would love for all of us to be together more often and have these revolving panels and all that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Geek, I'm glad to finally speak to you uh, person mm -hmm. to person. We've only known each other really on Twitter. Yep. Uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. Vegan, mm -hmm. uh, you are, you're great. I'm always, you've always been a great comrade, and I've always been uh, happy to uh, you know, share, share this platform with you. Piper, nice to meet you. Uh, do we follow each other on Twitter? Um, I don't know. To be honest. Okay. If you get a chance Although, later, my I app would like is... to point out that Sorry. I have had yes. both you and Piper in a chat at the same time before. Oh yeah, the oh, uh, was this... subscriber. The subscriber. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, that was so long ago. Oh yeah, um, it was over a year ago. If I'm like correct, I don't remember that either? Yeah, Piper. Uh, my at is Bronx Blogger NYC. So just oh, yeah, uh, because you're follow me or one. send me a message or something. Oh, yeah, I got nukes. I'll, I'll, I'll follow you. <laughs> yeah, because I try to, you know. I'm playing um, um, block Piper to also myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The peace, peace, love, and uh, you know, I'm thankful for this chat. And uh, we'll catch up again, okay? All right. All right. Hey, Every, before you everyone, go, were you yes. implying that I'm at that I'm ahead of the curve on the platform? <laughs> <laughs> I I think that you're one of the great uh, anarchist voices. You predate me on this platform, and um, you know, you're one of the people that gave me courage to make videos of of you know many comrades that I was aware of. Um, I think the first time I came, came where you were your channel, somebody did a response to you. I think it was TJ. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I remember you mentioning that you found my channel because of the drunken peasants responding he, to. I found out that he actually responded to you, and at one point to libertarian socialist rants. Yes, and his response was shit. So, <laughs> well, uh, well you I know, don't think he understands kind of our ideology at all. I think that he kind of he thinks that we're communists in like like the Lenin the Lenin sense. Like, mm, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, TJ's, oh yeah, I kind of TJ's, the drunken peasant response to everything is XD pee pee poo poo drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they start. It starts and ends with these assholes, and it's just kind of like anyone that chafed uh, TJ's nipples that day um, <laughs> is, you know, your pussy man. That's his best. Um, and it, you know, it's sad because you know. Uh, when uh, th during YouTube 1.0, I used to watch TJ stuff. I never in I never supported him politically, but yeah. uh, you know he was he used to be good for a chuckle, and now yeah. he's just become a gross tragedy. Oh, oh man, yeah. that was kind of uh, the thing is that I really was only into like his channel because he was like an asshole, and you know it made me chuckle I a bit. I think the majority of people, of, like, I think the majority of people followed him because. He probably made them laugh with his cursing and loudness. I don't yeah. think anybody. I yeah, mean, that's the basically. Dude, no, I think the dude isn't yeah. taken yeah. seriously by any other political YouTubers, whether right. they're on his side or politically or, or not. He's considered kind of a dude that doesn't really know what he's talking about and just flaps his gums on, on camera. I mean, yeah, I mean, but I, I think I, also a lot of us pre presumed he was way further left than he actually was. Yeah, I think exactly. the fact that he was against creationism and against Fox News and uh, ostensibly for Obama. Um, I think when the stupor of the Obama era that we were all in trans by to one yeah. extent or another, when yeah. that yeah. when that finger snapped, the liberals realized they hated us. Mm -hmm. And we didn't realize they hated us because, again, most of us came to his content during the era where liberals like lefties. And yeah. then the, came the big the big backstab of, of 2015. Like Trump, what? I remember TJ Kirk back on uh, when he was on Channel Awesome as like the distress washer too, between like 2007, 2009, and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it seemed him now. It's just like the, the, his distress watcher videos were fucking horrible. They were so bad. 
I mean, yeah. again, cha they Channel Awesome like, is he is put yeah. no effort into them whatsoever. Exactly. So, yeah, but again, the I mean, stupor of Channel said, Channel Awesome <laughs> during that even era. Said that most of those yeah. videos he like phoned in. Because yeah, exactly. Like the situation with Channel Awesome at the time. Yeah, <laughs> but most of again, so many of us were into Channel Awesome during YouTube 1.0 because you got to think yeah. about the marketplace at that time. And then now, when they got when they melted down, I was like. Oh, like it was so, it was just kind of like TJ was like, oh, I thought this was better than it was. And it's, no, it was just what was available at the time. Yeah, exactly. It just, I just remember that like Doug Walker just recently on a video just said SJW. And so I was like, not surprising. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and like cinema sins and all that stuff. There was a time where YouTube was a different thing. And the thing is, I think is that you didn't take it seriously. So even when it was problematic, you were like, oh, this is YouTube. This is like. Mm -hmm. um, public access TV where, where like you can't even realize what things are being promgy and, and goofy and then YouTube was like oh, oh no wait a minute TJ serious fuck off oh yeah I still like you know so when YouTube first was like a thing like when I first started like really watching YouTube I think I was like 10 years old it's been over a decade at this point that mm -hmm. yeah. like I've known what YouTube is I still was, remember some of the 1.0 days when basically I got on YouTube to watch Niga Higa, which also, from what I've seen, turned out to be pretty anti SJW in itself. So, you know. Yes. I first got into YouTube while I was literally working at the ACLU mm. in a cubicle uh, on paperwork, and we had so much free time. I'm surprised how boring it is for most people working at the ACLU, including like actual lawyers and stuff. Like it's it's very slow there, and um, YouTube was just a thing at that time that was a time killer. And it it's true. Like so much of YouTube 1.0, the ones that are still around. Uh, I think I first noticed it when like Philip DeFranco was like, "Man, fucking Ron Paul rocks." Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I I. I... For like at two thousand eight or something, like I actually yes. like Ron Paul, but I wasn't critical of capitalism at that time. <laughs> I have yeah, a theory about yeah, yeah. very quickly. I, I have a theory really about one, and I think it all like James Woods or Roseanne or whatever. I think that people who spend their life uh, trying to make it as a celebrity um, become so isolated and so ignorant that. They become reactionaries just by you know, of what they've done to become a celebrity has made them isolated and paranoid, and the reactionary politics just makes sense at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice, we can get a bunch of anarchists in a room and actually agree and stuff. And Piper, I, I sent uh, your you friend request on Facebook. Okay. I, I want to see in the chat. Cool. <laughs> Do you think? Do, oh crap! Who agrees with Bronx Blogger that this is the new for, or that streams are definitely the way that the platform's going? I do. I, I think like that was. I I like the streams, but fucking someone told me that Google Hangouts is getting next soon. Mm. Well, yeah, don't. I'm not saying I'm banned in prime content. We're not. We're not right wingers, but I think that we should have um, some kind of a for our side because the right wing is very very advanced in that right now and when people want to fill time they should be able to fill time with lefties proper lefties there's a lot and of not like the fucking young turks <laughs> something something to look into is a lot of people do uh podcasts now now mm -hmm. a lot of the leftist yeah. podcasts are honestly in my opinion pretty bad but mm -hmm. a few of them are good and it's a good medium in principle and all you have to really do is record yourself and then upload it to iTunes or SoundCloud or whatever the fuck. Yeah, exactly. You can even do it on YouTube um, oh, as videos. You can make like an hour-long video as a podcast. I so, mean, honestly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you could stream it here and then just syndicate it onto the podcast platforms. No, oh, yeah, true. Yeah, you can rip the, either record with Audacity or just rip, rip the Hangout. And honestly, for me, yeah, it was like these Hangouts, particularly on Garrett's channel, that like he exposed me to so many other different like leftists and, and liberals but that I still follow to today. By and, the way, uh, what the hell did he just like ghost or something? I I, I thought he, like left the internet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. I, he did. He's, 
Yes. He deleted. He, he did delete his old YouTube channel and his uh, Twitter and his uh, Patreon. And I was one of his pay, five dollar patrons at the time. And um, his uh, Discord server that he had run for his patrons, for his five dollar patrons, it, it, it was a personal reason. And I don't know if he would. He's expressed it in like YouTube channels and stuff like that. But I'm not going to go into it. I mean, and, you don't have to tell me the reasons. Oh, I know yeah. some of the stuff that were going on behind the scenes at the time. But again, I'm not gonna. But he's back. He was on someone's. Like yeah, that. he was on someone's political channel the other day. Who was that? Uh, he was on. The, he ho- I don't know who. What, what channel he was on the other day? I know he hosted. A it was a hangout. He, yeah. he did. Uh, Gwenno, he did one. He hosted one with Gwen Fear and Captain Andy. And like two weeks ago, yes. or something like that, he was on stream with like Chrissy Asti, Thought Slime, and Gwen Fear. Yes. Yes. Uh, did so, y'all vote in the midterm? I did. Oh, okay. I did yeah, not I voted vote I, during the midterms. I don't have the fucking time to. Uh, I just, but the, I, uh, I mean, for me, voting is like a one day thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't see the point when I could sit at home and not do that. <laughs> True. I mean, even Perfect. for even for, even even in my congressional district of the district nine of Washington State, it was a Democrat Democrat against each other. I, I, I still voted, <laughs> but like it's because in Washington State we have top two primary. Whoever the top two candidates in that primary will go on to the general, no matter what. So it's not like like each party gets to like their own candidate. No, it's just whoever's top two. Wow. Okay. Yes. Very quickly, I do actually have someone coming over. So thank you, everyone, for hosting me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm. I was very happy, uh, uh, you know, to finally have some company and not be on a stream with a bunch of, uh, you know. Shit bags. <laughs> you, you gotta have a hangout with like other leftists who like balance out having hangouts with like old writers, right wingers, or even sometimes just. Man, well, I plan to do a stream every week at this point now. <laughs> that, so. that 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 definitely is very cool. Uh, we will yeah. we will catch up. Everyone have a good night. Uh, Enjoy your weekend. Hi. Cool. Yes. All right. Enjoy okay. your weekend. All right. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm going to call it for the night, too, because I'm just... Uh, okay. I've been at it since, you know, 5 o'clock with the stream, and I'm yep. just, like, ready to... <laughs> I've been streaming... Uh, I've been in, like, in Hangouts for, like, four and a half hours now, because I was on uh, Chris Yossi's uh, Patreon oh, stream. Yeah. Uh, You've been, like, thoroughly hangouted out. <laughs> oh, I'm um, doing two more tomorrow, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey. So does anybody want to say anything before we uh, zap the podcast? Well, I don't why so. can't I do a hangout? You can. I don't know, sure. You should hold the next one. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, well, according to me, <laughs> I'm an anarchist. I can't tell you. The can- I can't tell you what to do. <laughs> Remember. Bookchin has the answers, except Bookchin was too weird of a species, to be honest. No, okay. <laughs> All right. So, you know, anything or anything else from anybody, you know, anything about your channels or. I have not posted anything in like two months. So I have not posted an edited video in like uh, almost two months. So maybe I'll get back onto it. So still check it out over time. But I do movie reviews. I don't talk about like anarchism and politics except when I'm in hang- hangouts like this. Um, I don't know. I guess I can begrudgingly tell you what my stuff is. I mean, I post on it frequently, but I'm not a fan of promoting it necessarily. Um, my YouTube channel is Social Revolution. And I have a WordPress WordPress blog called Rage Against Capital, and you can find both of them. Each each one has a link to the other. So, all right. Well, yeah, I'm actually going to get to work to posting YouTube those links. Oh, and don't forget my channel link. I won't. The Vegan Anarchist. You got it. Yeah. No milk, no milk, no masters. No masters. Got you. Do people even all take right. you seriously? Well, I do. All right. I get so a lot gonna... of hate from the right wing. Oh, uh, you will, yeah. I really don't want to end this mid-sentence, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> also, I like it, Devin, he said. <laughs> All right. And now we are...